Hello everybody, in this week's Weekender we are taking you through the latest and greatest that's been going on in the wargaming world, including some fantastic old school fantasy miniatures, along with some super dark and creepy ones. But make sure and stay tuned, this Saturday from midday UK time we are going to be live streaming and giving away a mountain of prizes. So we have stuff from the guys at Big Potato Games, our buddies at Themeborn are in here as well. We have so many prizes. We have have over 15 feet of prizes and if we come all the way down here we have a massive amount from the guys over at Asmodi. So we've got Terraforming Mars, Descent, Scythe, World of Warcraft Pandemic. So stay tuned because your weekend starts here. Hello everybody and welcome to The Weekender. I am taking on the role of Jerry for this week. I'm not as big and not as beardy, but Justin's doing all the work for us on that front and yes. supporting that I think, amazing set I think I'm there, more so. beardy now. You it's are, just yes, glorious, probably. that yeah. that addition to your face you've got going on there. Yeah. Only takes yes. six months. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, Commitment. I, I, I'm fairly sure Justin has, now needs to keep this throughout all recordings, so there could be no skipping back and forth between him having a bare chin now. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, hang on, hang on. That used to annoy people so much. <laughs> Some, something when it was off. Yeah, and then yeah. six months later, it would go out whenever this is on. It's just like, eh, 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 no, why? why? Huh? Don't trust exactly, this. Yeah. I don't trust uh, this. If you, if you hadn't guessed already, uh, I am joined this week uh, by Justin by Free, and by John. We've all come together to talk about some awesome wargaming news and board gaming goodness throughout the world of tabletop gaming this week. <laughs> but before we dive into everything proper, uh, we've got a couple of updates to dive through. So you would have seen that Justin uh, was showing off some amazing prizes. 15 have feet of prizes. Oh goodness, so many prizes are going to be available tomorrow to check out. So we are going to be joining up with the folks at the... Um, UK Games Expo to put together the giveaway event uh, running from 12 till 2 uh, over the weekend. So all you've got to do is head on over to uh, our Twitch channel, uh, either on YouTube as well. We've also got our Facebook as well. Uh, we're also going to be hosting everything through the On Tabletop um, homepage too, so you can get involved in that sense. We're going to be giving away, as Justin was saying, loads and loads of board games. There are tons and tons from a whole range of different publishers, some of which we'll be talking to uh, as part of our interviews throughout that two-hour show, mm -hmm. uh, some of them that have kindly donated them to give away to you lovely folk as well. Um, we're also going to be giving away an amazing prize for someone who's maybe never gone to the UK Games Expo before. We're going to be oh, giving away this. tickets and hotel rooms for the entire weekend for you to go and have some fun with it. So that's going to be the big grand prize that we're going to be giving away for that. Um, as you can see, you can follow down in the uh, links down below this video as well. Uh, we're going to have all the stuff for you to go and check out and mm -hmm. dive into and keep up with everything. So we're going to have the Twitch channel, the YouTube and the Facebook, as I was saying. Who do you go and uh, dive into and have fun with? Yeah. So, yeah. Now, the, the hope is we're going to be kicking <laughs> off at midday UK time. Right. It should hopefully run two hours-ish. I'm saying it's just because <laughs> I don't trust Warren. <laughs> I'll say I don't trust Warren, but I don't trust Warren. I'm, I'm fearing for you, Justin. I dread to think what oh, no. you're going to get chucked over you during no, these no, two no, hours. No, 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 you're avoiding no, the gunge. I've heard there's gunge, you know. Yeah. No, no, that, that's, that's, that's John Robinson's thing whenever he's doing the big bean tornado in the dark room. Yeah, guns, guns was flirted, but I think we're stepping away from that, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. But there will be fun quizzes and everything for to dive into. Um, it's going to be a really jam-packed show over those two hours. Um, and yeah, it should be good fun. It's going to be Justin, Warren and Jerry hosting that one. So make hopefully, sure it out. hopefully. Yeah. So long as nothing weird or wacky happens. Well, yes, that's true. Uh, and also we'll say that we are going to be doing sort of interviews during the show, uh, mm -hmm. but all of the full interviews that, are going to, that we're going to be sort of diving into with all the different co uh, companies will be available later as well. So some really nice things to dive into. Even if you you miss the 12 till 2 slots but you don't want to because of the prizes obviously yes oh, and they they will be in in two hours we have to give away everything yes. so it will be quite rapid fire so be there or miss out 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Clean air or miss out. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in addition to um, what we're going to be uh, doing with UK Games Expo on Saturday, on Sunday we have another big thing to do. So we are also going to be launching the Spring Clean Hobby Challenge, which is the big thing that we do every year. Yep. Uh, so with this, uh, all you've got to do with it is dig out all those old projects that you might have been sort of left to the wayside or whatever, and then you've got to get them out show us what you were going to be working with, and then turn it into something beautiful and amazing for this year. Um, as you can see, we're going to be giving away four £50 vouchers this time around with eight £25 runner-up uh, prizes as well. So that's two for each of the different categories. <laughs> Did I mention categories? Yes, we have categories. So yes, there are four categories for you to get involved with. Um, so there is best skill. Uh, this is based on the most skilled work, the br- most brilliant painting overall. We have best tutorial. So we have the project system set nice. up so that you can dive into. And when you're stuck into that, you can sort of fill it out with all the sort of what fours and warehouse of how you brought all your miniatures to life. That's also very important. We also have best idea. So even if you don't get to the end of your amazing um, Spring Clean Challenge project, as long as you had a really fun and cool idea, this is where you can get some prizes that way. And then we have the best one for them, the Otter Pups, or as we call it, well, we we do say Otter Pups, but it's actually also just junior member. Um, If you are under 16 and you want to dive in and have fun with this, then you can do that as well. Have fun. Put together some interesting projects with your kids, perhaps over this sort of springtime break. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, you could also win yourself some vouchers. And remember, um, if your kid wins it, it's not yours. It deserves to be. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. That voucher is there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 you make it sound like their kids just getting put into like a, a sweatshop. Okay, you're going to paint this and daddy's going to get new toys. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Bring both the All of those things. Um, so, yeah, so the challenge is going to run uh, from the 20th of March, so the start of spring, springtime on Sunday, all the way through to the 21st of June. So you have a load of time to get involved with this. And I just want to show, these are some of the projects that we have had in the past. As you can see, three plus seven pages worth of projects that people have been working on. Uh, it's a very simple thing uh, for you to sign up and get this sorted out. So let's go back to this again for a second. So, yeah, what you got to do is start a project, Click, go to the drop down menu and click the spring cleaning hobby challenge and away you go you'll nice. be ready to get stuck in and have fun with it i know that uh usually us on the team tend to do something with this uh i'm gonna probably dig out some tyranids that i've had sitting around for a really long time because i really wanted to paint some tyranids and i think i might break those out and start painting those anyone else have any uh, sort of uh visions of what they want to do with the spring clean challenge I mean, John looks hurt at the moment. <laughs> uh, see, he's always doing hobby. Me, on the other hand, it's just like, uh, I might actually okay. just spring clean my house. Oh, nice. No, Win-win. cheating. Cheating. <laughs> yeah, that's I'll, cheating. Yeah. I, Justin, I, I will lay down the gauntlet to you then, Justin. Oh, and- crap. <gasps> Did not, and, and we're doing this we're doing this on front <laughs> stage as well, which is even better because other people will know. I challenge you right. to, to get... 1500 points of your Space Marine Army finished. Is it I need to find my Space Marine Army. I have no idea where it is. <laughs> the first can't, part of the challenge is finding them. Mm, <laughs> can't like can't you just hunt. bring back you the, had, the you German a, tanks that are out no, of yours that you were meant no, to do the camel pattern on no, that I never saw again? No. <laughs> no. This is your challenge, Justin. Because you, you had a good colour scheme you were working on, and I want I to see an army of that. So okay. I want you to do that. And come on, it's until June, right? All right. Yeah, we've got time. So 1,500 points of that Space Marine 1500 army points. finished. Yes. If you, if you do it, if you manage to pull it off, I will delay your birthday present, and I will buy you an Imperial Knight for your army. That's counting. <laughs> so the, so on, the reward for my hard work is more another hard work, model more hard work that's oh, my yeah, that's more hard work yes i'm also, I'm also going to lay down a challenge to pre go on i'm gonna, I'm gonna put i'm gonna i'm gonna put you in the ringer so i want you to you know that amazing witch king on nazgul that you were working on yes oh, no. i want you to finish that for okay <laughs> again you, you i like pay, justin i need to find exactly yeah. <laughs> you don't have to pay any of the goblins or the orcs you just have to paint the nazgul and the witch king and i'll be God. happy so yeah all right i can do that i can do that if i can find the nazgul yeah no, if i can find the Bill beast um but what i do plan on doing is because i keep printing off 3d printing stuff i'm going to get a bulk of it painted uh because i keep tend to print things and put them to one side I'm going to get quite a lot of it painted uh, and stop and put my 3D printing on the poles for a moment. So that'd be my plan. Indeed. 
Um, so yeah, if you want to get involved, uh, make sure to um, head on over to the article when it launches on Sunday. You follow all the instructions in there. And as I say, loads of amazing prizes in there if you have a go at. And also, it's just a good reason to dive into all that um, those mounds of plastic and metal and resin that we have sitting. Around. I mean, the, the tire well, fume yeah, is right as, there, as, as people are showing. But yeah, dive into all that and get it painted up. Um, there is one more announcement. Oh my God, we're giving you a panoply of Oof. announcements. You may have seen that we had an article going up this week. So we are going to be uh, launching alongside Corvus Belly, Infinity Week, Raven Eye on yes. Monday. So this is going to be very awesome indeed. So, yes, we are going to be talking with Carlos Killian, who came over to the studio. You might have seen in that little kind of teaser vlog that we did. And we're going to be going through the Raven Eye book, which is the new fantastic supplement mm -hmm. there. We're also going to be looking at the Morat Aggression Force Action Pack, which is quite a mouthful, yes. but an amazing set of new miniatures. <laughs> As you can see here, these are mere teasers of what amazing stuff awaits you for Infinity. There's going to be loads and loads of videos all throughout the week, including a battle report. Everybody loves a good Carlson Killian battle report. Uh, um, we also, sorry, go on, Justin. I, I will say I have been editing through these just to try and be ahead for next week. And I will say, keep an eye on Wednesday because there is something huge coming. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, very true. Um, and in addition to that, if you comment on any of those videos next week, you'll also be able to win yourself one of three Operation Crimson Stone battle packs. Um, so we're going to be giving away them in a similar fashion to we normally do. So we have one for YouTube, one for on tabletop, and an additional chance to win for our Cult of Game subscribers. So yes, Raven Eye Week is coming on Monday. Mm, nice excuse do, to get yeah, into code one there, isn't very it? Very true. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're going to give you a little tiny teaser of that before we're back in a little second. Comment on our Raven Eye Week videos for your chance to win Operation Crimson Stone. We'll be choosing three winners, one from the comments on YouTube, one from OnTableTop.com, and our Cult of Games members get an extra chance to win. have the coolest moment of the show that I'm into. <laughs> and I have decided to give the honor of uttering the immortal phrase to the wonderful John here, because he did it off camera and it was amazing. It's pretty good. So John, <laughs> he will never make take it, it, it again. Oh yeah, that's true. Take it away. <laughs> I'm for indie of the week. Ooh. Oh God, that was that game that was game. Oh, Yeah, it was. God, I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. that little right. earworm. Yeah. So uh, this week, <laughs> I have chosen the indie, uh, and I've decided to go particularly uh, sort of weird and old hammer with Creative Sculpt Studio. So oh. let's have a peek at this. So Creative Sculpt Studio, can you see this? Can you see yes. the show? Right, yes. It's just because <laughs> Jerry does all this, right? So anyway, so um, this is Creative Sculpt Studio, which is run by a dude called Paul. One man band? A one man band. Nice. I don't know his last name, but um, but Paul is an amazing name anyway. Uh, and the idea is that uh, Paul has been sculpting miniatures for many, many, many years and does them for a range of different companies, but also for himself. So he's mm -hmm. a sculptor for hire but also does all his own, own stuff as well, uh, based around the Dark ho dark Hollow Miniatures collection, as you can see just at the top there. So this collection uh, is broken down into a whole range of different elements. Uh, there's lots of stuff in here for role players, but there's also stuff in pe uh, here for people who are really into like old hammery stuff and that kind of vibe as well. So I'm going to start off with one that I think would be very good for a lot of role-playing gamers, and that is this Dark Hollow Adventurers oh. Party, as you can see here. So Everyone needs a pony. Everybody exactly. needs a pony. Yeah. Every adventuring party needs a pony. In, 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 in. <laughs> you, then you need something to carry away all the stuff you've stole off the dead body. All the loot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but in this, obviously, you've got your sort of standard stuff, so you've got your kind of wizard leading the party and sort of going off into strange dungeons, leading halflings to their doom. Mm -hmm. You've got the sort of ranger rogue style character there that could be an elf, could be a human if you wanted to, maybe even like a drow as well. All very nice too. And then you've got your classics here. So you've got kind of like your heavily armoured knight or a paladin perhaps as well. A little tiny sneaky halfling rogue. <laughs> thought it was really nice. Uh, 
a sort of a dwarf cleric. That tends to be the one that everyone goes to, sort of archetypally yeah. when it comes to D&D. And then your fantastic female fantasy barbarian as well, which I think is pretty cool. I really like how the poses aren't just static, aren't they just in yes. one place? They're all in different movements as well, especially the last one and the wizard at the front. Mm-hmm. They're very um, different looking. The rogue does have one of my big bugbears. Go on. Oh, yes. Not the rogue, sorry, the, the archer. Oh, oh, yeah. Top right. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's drawn back, but there's no arrow. You can put an arrow in. Yeah. Put I don't know. It's, it's one of my bugbears on miniatures Sculpt, whenever you see it. Arrow. Sculpt an arrow. It's not a big deal, Justin. Just, right, just, no. just do it. Just do it. It's some bow ringing. It's just a bugbear I have. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a nice little set, I think, for people who are starting out. And you can also see initially, like, well, especially this is especially why I was drawn to this, is that all of this stuff is sort of traditionally <laughs> hand sculpted. So you've got the the old school greens that you'd normally mm. see in sort of um, the three old, ups, yeah, and those kind of three ups and that kind of stuff. So it's really nice stuff here, sort of like to get you started with things, and it's pretty cheap as well. Yeah, which is quite nice. So yeah, it's it's stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've got your nice little adventuring <laughs> party there. I'm going to make everybody sick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then too much off. power for one Ben yes. to have. Really I know. Nice. This is what happens on Ben's yeah. in charge. <laughs> I'll make you ill watching the weekend. Uh, but another one of the sets that I've written. So Dark Hollow Dwellers is kind of like the main way that this sort of comes together. Mm-hmm. And this shows off all the like really <gasps> weird and wonderful stuff that um, Paul has been working on. So if you see anything in particular that you want me to talk about or show off. Can you look at those minions there, Ben? This one? The, the third one. There's the a moon with legs. The third There's one, the minions. What? Ah, yes, I see. Right, here we go. Ha-ha. I know what I'm doing. I can, I can navigate oh, this. That, you know, top right just looks like Plank from Ed Ed, and Eddie has had a bit of a hard time. He's retired. <laughs> He's uh, gone to the Wizard's Castle Mill. Oh, it's yeah. a little fishy. Catfish! Yeah. That's almost a catfish. He just trolls everybody on the internet online. That's what he does. Yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> oh, the moon with legs is great. You can imagine Actually, he just yeah. looks like he just doesn't want to do his job. You know, he lives in a wizard's mm-hmm. castle when you're telling him, oh, for God's sake, where yeah. you got to go? Sun's yeah, going down. Sorry. This this reminds me of a, a game I wanted to make where it would be wizards <laughs> arguing about which minion was the best. Mm-hmm. And then each player is essentially the wizard sending out his preferred type of miniatures. Yeah, yeah. these all belong in it. A wizard's castle, don't they? Yeah, yeah. so po- Pokemon with wizards. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Pokemon can you yeah. can you imagine the but the guy in the bottom right? He's uh, he's always carrying something. Don't know what it is. He don't know. He does, he's just always got something. In his face. He's <laughs> he's the thrills you were looking for. <laughs> Please don't hit me. <laughs> you can you can definitely see like where the influence of sort of old school Warhammer's come in for these because mm. the, these are all the kind of familiars that you would have seen if you were diving into sort of classic chaos armies from back in the day in Warhammer. These are all the sort of things that will pop up in kind of like the margins of uh, a Mordheim book, for example, as well. I mean, you could imagine that sort of hopping around the streets of Mordheim, uh, delivering warp stone to people as you were sort of pottering about. But, yeah. See, I imagine that one's one that just annoyed the wizard. And it's just like, <laughs> you will be a small walking cauldron now. <laughs> you are now my chamber pot. Yeah, this guy, can I sell you some mushrooms? This guy in the top right, that's, this is where he's Mushroom. going. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 this one's also, I like this one because it's all got like a little bit more of a sci-fi vibe. That is it. very sci-fi yeah. like, yeah. It's either like a little tiny sort of wooden automaton or it's something that's kind of like it's the servant, like a little tiny servitor style yeah. creature. Depends how you paint it. I feel oh, like yeah. it needs a wind up key in its back. Yes. Mm. That yeah, cool. that'd be a great yeah. idea. Yeah. And then you've got this guy who's carrying the wizard's staff, obviously. Yeah. Or, He's or been relegated. Brush. Or a paintbrush. Oh my God. That'd be oh, lovely. that's yeah. great. Yeah. You and need to buy that. A baby Thulu. <laughs> a baby, a baby Thulu. Thulu, yeah. yeah. He, just Thulu. he just likes fetch. A cute, acute, acute Thulu, maybe. <sighs> the know. eyes just do a lot, don't they? You yeah. just see the little sparkly eye and it suddenly becomes adorable. Yeah. I'm, I'm just <laughs> waiting to see Rex Sanchez. Mm. <laughs> this this needs to be uh, the prize for like a painting competition or something. Definitely, if everybody gets one of those, like painted in gold, silver, and bronze. Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Well, if you ever wanted to do a painting challenge, everyone yeah, who paints yeah, the same mini. Yeah. Mm. Um, but like for example, there. So that's obviously sort of breaking down little individual sets and minutes and stuff. I'm just going to bring up bring up some of these because there's some amazing okay. stuff. And this is fairly exhaustive when it comes to kind of like traditional. D and D style monsters. That like hobgoblin, the hobgoblin. I'll open the hobgoblin oh, yeah. as well. Let's look at that first. Thank you, Justin. <gasps> Thank you. Yes, yeah, that's awesome. Cool that is. Yeah. You like it? Ah, big Zuby in picture. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's great. I love that sort of old school red skull on the shield as well. Mm, I think very, that's very nice like you know the PS One game Medieval. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You'll have been given another right. chance to be the hero instead of being shot in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're great. So uh, this is a, this is actually an, an important thing to mention as well. So a lot of the miniatures are done in metal, but they also do resins and that kind of thing. Oh, too, okay. Which is quite nice, but. Um, yeah, so oh. it, it's a lot of sort of more traditional materials than you would have thought, which is quite good. I love that uh, bit. And again, you get that really oh, nice yeah. sort of, ha- yeah, you get that really nice kind of like hand sculpted feel to all of this stuff, which I think is really good. Like you could, like that feels like it's been made by the fingers and thumbs of somebody at a table somewhere, which I think is really cool. And it means that you get all this, this kind of character built into the faces and the expressions and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I think a little bit more maybe than the CAD stuff that we see uh, nowadays. Not to, you know, diminish anyone who sculpts in, in digital mediums and that kind of thing. But uh, I think there's something quite nice about the sort of more traditional natural looking material. Yeah. yeah. You and me have had this debate before, Ben. I prefer CAD. You prefer how I sculpt. know. I know. <laughs> what about you, John? What do you prefer? Do you, do you like the digital stuff or do you like the old school? They, it, could, it could be either to me because yeah. as long as the miniature just catches my Space, eye, yeah. it doesn't matter how it's designed. Yeah. 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 Oh man, he's just saying, hey guys. He does. He looks what harmless, doesn't he? Yeah. I've always wanted to role play a bugbear in a in a D&D game mm. and just be like this massive misunderstood monster. That's <laughs> yeah. what I love about Minotaurs. All yeah. I want to do is make some friends. friends. Oh. <laughs> I've also got this one as well. A you massive eye tyrant or sort of beholder old, old yeah, school classic. looking there as well. Yeah, amazing definitely. But um, let's see what I've got. Oh yes, this one's amazing. So it's just like, uh, you know, Hulk. like a... Yeah, so in D anD D they have Amber Hulks, I think they're called, or Amber Hulks, and this is kind of like a take on that. So it's like a big, huge, chitinous beast with big claws and fangs and things like that. So they've really dived into the idea of like making all the kind of weird D anD D monsters that were almost sketched by Gygax and his friends in the old sort of D anD D manuals and that kind of thing. So it's a really nice little touch. I was going to say it's literally a bug bear. Uh, yes. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. Boom, boom. You did. We'll look at the dragon in a second because I'm going to go up to these because here's a few more. There's minions for you oh, three. Uh-huh. I, I think these are great. These are fantastic. I could we'll probably come nice. up with a story ah, with right. all of these in a wizard's tower. Ta- in a wizard's tower, you know, they're very easy to. Yeah. This guy with all the eyes on it. <gasps> That's the cutest little spider. I'm I do not want to get it away from me. Oh. I'm going to make this. I'm just going to make this bit. Can we blow this up for Justin and stick it on his wall? <laughs> he just looks no, like no, he's because... trying to sell you insurance. <laughs> 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 Although the the worst tooth fairy ever. Yeah, two year <laughs> warranty on your car insurance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, oh God, I'm just starting to hear. Go <laughs> come. <laughs> that that has, this guy the bottom right thing. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. petrifying. Yeah. That that hand is scary. Oh wow! Yeah. I like you got the some... snake that gave up on its head and was like, "Ah, eh, just a skull will do." <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's also this as well. So this oh, is wow. one of their one of their bigger miniatures. Well, does that yes, come it's in like a... pieces. Does that, or is that I all in one? No idea. I'm gonna look. Here we go. So we go. It's a three headed dragon. It's a seven part multi seven. resin piece. There we go. Wow. One three cool. centimeters in length. Mm, it's a big Whew, boy. That is huge. Oh, coming out it's very it's soon. It's a nice big like, centerpiece. That yeah, very much so. Yeah. Nice three headed dragon. I like that the heads are all different as well. So you've yeah. got the more traditional head, and then you've got the slightly more mutated versions at the same yeah. time. Mm. It, 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 it's really kind of like the, the old meme where you've got the two regular heads, and the last one just looks like a bit of a derp. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a derp. There we yeah. go. We'll all grow up together. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so we've also got this stuff. So, also got, again, a little bit more sort of dungeon damning things. So, I'll just take a look at one of these, this one here, for this one. So. Mm. So yeah, you've got some more dungeon fiends, as you can see. You've got the, the little hobgoblin and stuff nice. that you've seen in the last one. Alongside some of the other sort of spirits and things that you might oh, run into. That snail though. I was just saying this, yeah, the snail is great. The the paintwork on that shell is the gorgeous. Shell. Yeah. I think I think that's that's one of the nice things I think about this range in general is that every single one of the pages we've been onto with this, when we're looking through this indie, everyone's been like, Oh my god, look at that. Oh my god, look at that. And I think that's that's something that really indicative of Paul's sculpting style and things, yeah. but it kind of draws the eye to individual things. I mean, that's... The clearly, gelatin sky, yeah. You know, it's like Slimer <laughs> when he was a bit more hench. <laughs> <laughs> during his gym bro phase. During his gym bro phase. Well, yeah. I mean, Do you during, even during sweat, his bro? under phase, phase before he got, you know, junk. 
And then you've got slightly more weird, manky, undead creatures and things like mm-hmm. that, which we're going to look at in a second as well. And then this amazing ghost. But yeah, nice. Cool nice little troll. I do so, like yes. that even though it's traditional sculpts, they're being painted in the modern style. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a really nice thing to kind of like set them off. No goblin. Well, were there goblin green bases? I didn't see any goblin green bases. No. No goblin green bases on these models. <laughs> yeah. um, so, yes, we've also got the undead, as I was sort of mentioning there too. Mm-hmm. So we've got some really nice characters here. I'll just bring up a few. If you see any that you like, Call out uh, Mungo so, up the top. Mungo, oh Mungo! There we go. The undead pint. Mungo. We got one, John. It's the one that you. Oh, like. I love oh. these names. Yeah. Hans. Let's open Jeff. Zemina. And Henrik. Let's look at those then, shall we? Yeah. We got Bill. 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 Bill the blacksmith. There. Very cool. I like the fact that it's. This is probably like a town that's all just dead. Yeah. <laughs> They, they carried on about their jobs. Kept the a little bit World of Warcraft. Mm. <laughs> They're all dead, yeah. but they don't actually realise it. So they exactly, just doing yeah. their thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, the thing I like about these ones in particular is that you could paint them up in, like I think, three different ways. Mm-hmm. You can either paint them as kind of zombies and add loads of blood into the mix, mm-hmm. or you could go for that slightly more sort of emaciated, bone-like, sort of almost brittle feel. Power it to the Caribbean kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Or go completely like to the other end of the scale and just do them as ghosts and just do them all on that oh, weird ectoplasm yeah. look with like blues, yeah, or, blues or greens or something. There's ethereal yeah. paints to them. Mm. Yeah, that'd be good. Here's, here's your one. Oh, look at Mongo. 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 So he was the guy on the other one, wasn't he? Was he the guy in the pack? Yeah, yeah. So we saw him in the yeah. top painted up as well. But yeah. That's amazing. I love that. I like that the, all the details have sort of worked into this. So you can see that kind of like twisted, contorted spine coming up the back and everything as well. Uh-huh. Really nice. And then the eye popping out of his head. <laughs> Everyone needs a good eye popping. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's a thing, right? You know. Yeah. 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 Jethro, Jethro has boundary issues and he's related to anger. I love that we're giving <laughs> a family background of these guys. It's That's fantastic. fine. Angus, then did we bring up? We didn't bring up Angus. Let's bring up Angus. Oh. Where's Angus? Let's find Angus. I can't see Angus. Where's Ang- Angus? <laughs> oh, dying. More Probably product. on the more. more Who product. are you, Angus? I'm going slowly now, Justin. It's okay. I will find you. And I Hans, will to the Carl, world. Franz, Joffrey. Oh, what? Oh, I think we, uh, maybe, maybe we don't. We're never going to meet Angus. It looks like it, when it went to more products, it looked like it flipped around because there's Mungo. It did. Mungo's ah, the one. weird. Anyway, right. Oddness. Yeah, but anyway, so there's so Jethro. Jethro. He's got boundary issues. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you kind of imagine him just going, you're like off my hugger. land. <laughs> he looks like a hugger. Yeah. He looks like a hugger. <laughs> Taking boundaries, yeah. Fresh. It's okay to step over the line, yeah. But I should also point out, so obviously I haven't really talked about scale yet. I mean, Paul works in all sorts of different scales, but most of these have been done in kind of like 28 to 32 mil. So it's kind of classically, heroically, fantasy proportioned and that kind of thing, which is quite mm-hmm. nice. Henrik the Miner there as well. That's all right. He's armless. <laughs> <laughs> we are fantastic yes. today. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm just going to close a few of these so we can move on. So we also have this thing as well. So we've got the Monsters Encounters. Ooh. So this kind of throws in a few of the sort of slightly weird and wonderful things that um, they worked on as well. So obviously we've got the dragon there that we've seen before. But you also then have all these little tiny, like weird little um, sort of creatures, creatures on snails, yeah. which I think is just fantastic. I mean, you've got, I, I, these in particular are just like, I don't know, I want, I want Cyril, enraged son of Gelatinous Bob. I do love that they've had it embedded a family tree in these guys. It's yes. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> but look how cool is that guy? Oh, that's brilliant. Like, yeah. Yeah, but like, is, that's a, is he coming or going? <laughs> just living his best life, Justin. You can never know. Yeah, yeah. Like, imagine you were putting together a chaos army and you were like, who's your champion? Oh, is it that big guy in the massive arm, the massive yes, on the back of that war horse? No, it's him. This the little guy tiny guy. <laughs> comes in slowly on the snail. <laughs> I mean, hang on, you, you've got to watch out for the little ones. They're vicious. They'll be angle biking you. They'll have your kneecaps. Cool. Well, yeah, my, my D&D character does that. Yeah. Oh, I really like snails as mounts. Mm, I think it's a really They're cool great. idea. Yeah. Yeah. And as they like, a lot of these things have been designed for role playing and stuff, but I think a lot of this stuff in particular um, works really nicely for those people trying to make sort of old hammer style armies. Because a lot of times you can get your hands on a lot of the old plastics and things, but the metals are a little bit harder to find and they're usually a bit pricey. Mm. So looking at stuff like this enables you to dive into maybe an old chaos army or something a little bit different, maybe Skaven or Undead or something like that, and put together some really interesting forces made up of interesting new models from a, a, a creator rather than mm. just having to run the old Citadel ones and that kind of mm. thing. So, 
How cool is that? Gelatinous, Gelatinous bomb. He looks so grumpy with his He's pipe. retired, hasn't he? He's, he's done. He's <laughs> out of the game. I'm this. I'm drying out. <laughs> he's, he's, he's tired. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've also had these Chaos Warriors. So this is a slightly more sort of badass, um, kicking ass style uh, Chaos miniatures and that kind of thing. So... Let's just look at let's look at the whole warband. There we go. So we've got that's the whole set of them all together. Oh. Again, going for that slightly more sort of old school look and mm-hmm. feel to them. Yeah. Um, I think Paul was saying on in, in kind of like the about me section of his page, this is the kind of stuff that he loved making when he was younger, and so that's kind of filtered through into sort of what he's been doing now as the sort of range has grown and developed and that kind of thing too. Um, and I think it's really awesome because this kind of gives the appearance of again old hammer style chaos war bands that weren't just made up of like followers of one god they were made up of all different types of characters mm-hmm. that came together and sort of battle for supremacy on the tabletop and things i so, mean this yeah. one set instant war band for Frostgrave. yep yeah very much so yeah yeah a really quirky weird one definitely mm-hmm. that'd be really cool yeah um so yeah so loads of awesome stuff in there i think this one's pretty nice as well is that a like, scorpion tail or is that yeah, coming from that? Yeah. yeah. Or is that coming from the sword? No, that's, that's, coming, from that's coming from him. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. It, it's coming from his nethers. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got that classic sort of bird-headed look to a Zenchian sort of warrior with that kind of almost magical crystal sword as well, which I think is really nice. Very cool. And then oh. the head of Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right, it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. That's, that's pretty really cool. Thing. Yeah, I uh, just want to bring a few more little bits and pieces here as well before we finish up as well. So as I say, they do a little bit of scenery too. So you've got a couple of e- extra pieces here. You've got that sarcophagus that we saw as part of the Undead collection, which has got the little creepy <laughs> hand opening up the tomb so it can Ooh. climb out and stuff. I think it's really nice. It's got a little sort of sigil or crest on the side of it as yeah. well. But a very nice little piece there. But good for you. Good if you're putting together kind of like an That's undead scenario in a D and D game or something, mm-hmm. or if you're maybe doing some Seven TV, doing oh, yeah. Dracula, Dead and Loving. Very it. true. Yeah, you've also got this, which is the Evil Totem, which I think is really nice. That's if, very cool. Yeah, so head's been cut off, stuck on the end, <laughs> no legs, <laughs> all the blood in the world, and clearly been attacked Thank by you. something that's a little bit goblinoid. I'd like to think because of a little kind of bad moon there as well, and he's I, clutching his last will and testament in his arm there. Maybe, see, maybe. I don't know. I, I imagine he's been in a horrible accident, and the goblin has came along and went, "Sorry, I can fix it. I can fix it. I can fix it. I can fix it." <laughs> Are you saying this is a goblin surgery table? Is that yeah. what you're <laughs> yeah, the goblin, the goblin tried to help the goblin field. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then I couldn't go without talking about this as well. So we have the dwarf slayer, the dwarf oh. giant slayer. So oh, yeah, I do really like awesome. this. That giant head alone is friggin' fantastic. That's uh-huh. great. Never Love mind the fact he's got a lip ring in. Never mind <laughs> the bird, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's awesome, isn't it? That's what you imagine Gotrak's like after he's killed someone. It's just that, like, yeah, got it. That is the picture of pure job satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> if your job doesn't make you feel like a dwarf slayer, you're in the wrong job. He you said I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's pretty impressive, especially if, like a little that. vignette or something if you want to dive into and play around with that. Yeah. Comes with the metal metal dwarf on the top and then the resin giant's head as well underneath which I think is as, as John was saying there I think the, the giant's head in particular is just phenomenal I, think that's I cool. want to see the giant before he gets beheaded yeah. <laughs> just saying just saying maybe maybe Paul will do that for you maybe maybe he'll do that for you uh, there was another thing I wanted to talk about as well so we've also got as I said um, Paul does uh, kind of uh, commission sculpts that kind of thing as well um, so he works for a whole bunch of different companies and things so if you are a company out there that's looking to try and sort of get some miniatures done for a game or something or you just like that's the right. idea of having something commissioned for your own range or something maybe give uh, Paul a go and see what you think because he's got a little contact page there for you to dive into and have fun with Coolness. and then there's a nice little about page as well talking about some of the stuff that Paul's done in the past and the different companies and things that he's worked with and some of the influences wow he scales all different sizes, doesn't he? Yeah, so he's worked in six all the way up wow. until 90 millimeter, which is amazing. So yeah, very and cool. bigger. Yeah, I also want to point out as well that recently, so this isn't available at the moment, but Paul, there you go, Paul Smith did, um, well, or does <laughs> a lot of um, uh, Kickstarters mm-hmm. uh, working on different minutes and things. This was the latest one that was done. Uh, that's going to be fulfilling in uh, July there. So. If you're interested in checking out some of these miniatures before they appear on the actual web store itself, then uh, you can check out the Kickstarter and things that Paul does. Grim, isn't it? 
So yeah, that, that, that face in the, the main body is horrifying. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's brutally gorgeous, I think would be the best way to say. It's asking mm. to be stabbed in the mouth, though, isn't it? Yeah. Just... But yeah. So if you are interested, uh, head on over to creativesculptstudio.com <laughs> and have a look at it. Dive into the dark, hollow miniatures range and have fun with it. And uh, tell us what you pick up from there, because I'd be interested to see what people have been thinking about it. But yeah. Very cool stuff there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said very cool. There we go. I got it in. My, <laughs> meme, is, my meme is complete. <laughs> so uh, that was Indie of the Week. I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break and then we're going to be back to dive into all sorts of amazing tabletop gaming news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh- you love. It's the mother- news <laughs> hello everybody and uh, we're back for some amazing tabletop gaming news uh, mm, there's been some fun stuff happening uh, and i'm going to be kicking things off by talking about micro art studio and their new range of very nice pre-painted pre-colored terrain so let's go dive in and show that off so yes their new terrain uh, has been sort of designed so that it matches up with the aesthetic of the rest of their Infinity stuff. Um, all of it is HDF, so it's the nice. sort of um, traditional kind of like wooden terrain that everyone would be very, very familiar with. But the big thing with this stuff is that, as you can see here, all of it is obviously pre-coloured and wow. then pre-detailed with all the sticker panels and everything on the sides of it. I think is really awesome. I love um, the billboard stuff on the bus. Yeah. yeah. So they've done some really nice stuff. That, like all of these kind of like little accessories are all available. Things like these kind of um, roadblocks and that kind of stuff is all there. All of these things as part of their kind of like resin collection, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But a lot, of, a lot of the sort of larger pieces are all available individually uh, in this new pre-colored format. Uh, and as you can see here, they do some really large wow. pieces and then some really smaller ones, some smaller ones as well. So this is just one of them, and it shows up exactly what they do with this. So all the sort of outside panels and things have got that kind of color attached to them. And then on the interiors, you've also got some element, different elements there too. Um, there's still some areas that you might want to come back to these and sort of finish them off with. I think like a lot of people tend to sort of put markers along the re- the sort of edges of these just to kind of like finish them off a little bit. Yeah. But I think in general, uh, because they're trying to make kind of like, as I say, that sort of pre-painted, easy to use and quick to get to the tabletop terrain, I think that's fine as it is. You don't guess. need to go back to that. No, no, you I don't at all. Yeah. Uh, they've also done like a few different styles. So oh. obviously this was the um, Kyoko 3 sort of style, which kind of very sort of traditional kind of like Japanese style buildings, mm-hmm. but with the sort of sci-fi aesthetic built on top of them, a little oh. bit from uh, from uh, Infinity. It's all modular as well, which is pretty cool. So you can play around with it, which is quite nice. Uh, and then you also have these ones here. So this could obviously be used in the, one of their slightly more Japanese settings. But you could always take this and put it into pretty much every, any other yeah. uh, landscape, I reckon. Uh, it I looks it looks like it's one of their modular buildings. Yeah, yeah. So, so each, each blocks and blocks. Yeah. Mm. So each of these can be sort of slotted together, and then you could put multiple ones on top of it as well, which is quite nice. The graffiti is a nice touch there. I yeah. love the graffiti on that. Yeah, I think it's really nice. Uh, you can see, I think if you look, uh, that's not even any bigger, but you can see here as well that they kind of like added additional levels with the, the stairs and things onto it, which I think is yeah. quite nice because uh-huh. you can move around the railings and things, which is quite good. Here's one of their very modular ones. So this is kind of designed as a little bit like a, like a hab block uh-huh. or like the apartments and things. So you've got that one there, which is sort of done in the blue, again, with all the texture detail and everything on the side of it. You've even got the little signs there, as you were saying, just in sort of bringing uh-huh. attention to specific really areas nice. and giving them a little bit of character. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you have this one here which kind of breaks down into individual sections as well um, they've all been designed to like they work well with Infinity so all of them have, have got lots of space high inside high sci-fi kind of, yeah, yeah yeah they've got that vibe but then also on like a gameplay na- uh, element as well so like everything's been scaled and sized so that it works within the kind of um, is it the ITS format that they use the Infinity Tournament System format yeah. so they've done that especially with some of the larger buildings they've actually got objective rooms built into them and that kind of thing which is quite good I think I so. like that they're doing the same cuts with, or the same kits with different colours yes. yes yeah yeah. I think uh, it, I think it means that you can sort of play around with this a little bit more and just have fun with it and build a city quite quickly especially if you put it onto one of these um, the mats and things that you can get well, yeah. um, from uh-huh. a, a wide variety of different uh, providers at the moment as well so uh-huh. 
there's some really nice stuff I think there for Infinity fans to dive into, especially with uh, our recent Infinity Week. Uh, yes. Well, the Infinity Week coming up next Monday. So, yes. So cool. some really fun stuff there. I'd say all pre-painted or pre-coloured, I guess, would be the way to uh, sort of talk about that. But um, yeah, it's good there if you want to sort of dive in and play around with, um, well, Putting together infinity terrain without having to bother about ever going near it with a brush, basically. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to put a lot of bright colours into your terrain and you certainly don't need to. Especially after spending, you know, if you're a good infinity painter, spending months and months and months working on these fantastic looking armies that we keep seeing every weekend, you know, in Uh in our project system. And then you're like, I have to put that same level of detail into my terrain. No. (laughs) Yeah, I (laughs) can't can't do that with a three inch brush. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so amazing stuff there for Infinity. Uh, if you want to dive in, have fun with it. Uh, free, you're going to take us off to a, in a journey into. A, who would have thought that you would want to talk about Moons? Me! Uh, oh, <laughs> here I am with your weekly whimsy update. That's what I'm doing. So, um, Moonstone have got some new releases on their website. So, following on from their successful Kickstarter last year with the Horizon, there's some new minis, the expansion and campaign flow in a fresh cohort of dark and twisted whimsical releases. So starting from the top, as you've got there, you've got the new Horizon expansion that's on the store. So this is chock-a-block full of content. So this was part of last year's Kickstarter. So some of you might be like me and be lucky enough to already have the hardback. So I can take you through what is in there. So we've got 176 pages of content in total to widen Moonstone as a game. So there's nine story scenarios in there, rules for linking up games into campaign mode. There's an extensive and detailed rules breakdown with different experience so you can go through and see how to play it. And if you've got the first book, you're going to see a continuation of 55 extra character profiles inside. So that's going to include the good old Boris the Bunny Summoner, and some unseen ones there, like um, the two that you have. So you've got Duchess and Creep. Uh, there's also some future releases in there as well. That we'll just have a look at what is coming. You've also got 100 pages worth of lore and storyline in there as well to supplement your game. So there it is a lot in the horizon, especially if you're looking for more campaign play with Moonstone. It's something that you should have a look into. So speaking of campaign, you've got the new campaign deck as well. So this was part of Kickstarter as well. So you can get hold of your deck from the store too. So it's going to primarily support campaign play and it's going to provide a flow of story. But if you do want to get some more use out of the cards as well, along with the 70 campaign cards that you get, there's 36 different upgrade cards. So you can bring tweaks and tricks into your battle. So it's going to bring a wider variety really of crazy whimsical gaming uh, just to spice it up a bit um along with the new content we've got new miniatures joining the fray as well so as i said earlier yeah. back of horizon we've got some characters that haven't made their way to the tabletop yet so there's two new troop boxes um cast in resin on their way so first up you've got the masquerade troop box so you've got the duchess creep and claudia de bell so they're all high and mighty and rich and would certainly fit in well in Carnival, actually, if you want to look oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for something a little different. But along with other Moonstone characters, they've got dark and sinister trips up there, well-polished sleeves. So you've got the Duchess there. She's an upper-class social climb, climber who is keen on getting creative with her murderings. Uh, the creep who's sneaky and he lives life in the shadows. Uh, he plans his tricks through intimidating tactics and draws towards the weird and sinister. And then you have Claudia Duvel, and this is fantastic. She is the politest robber that you're ever going to meet. Um, <laughs> she's going to rob you blind on the highway, right. but expect some kind worded therapy in the process of being robbed uh, by her. Uh, the second box you've got that have hit the store, uh, you've got more humans coming and you've got the black powder troop box as well. So we've got three scurvy ridden pirates joining the fray. Moonstones on the mind. Uh, this is my favourite. It's made me smile. You've got Swash, Peggy, and Powder Monkey. So uh, Swash, he's a fine upper class gentleman, smug smile, as you can he see. He looks it, yeah, yeah. He does. <laughs> he's got a bit of a Gaston about him, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, he's keen on starting his life in the high seas by flexing his fencing abilities. So he's adopted the name Swash quite recently and he's keen on dedicating his life to piracy and upholding the legacy, legacy of his father. You've got Peggy and I was so happy to see that Peggy has got a peg leg. I was, I was very you happy. You Peggy can't not that. be yeah, a pirate yeah. called <laughs> Peggy and not have a peg leg. Um, and she's wonderful. So she's a strong female character. Quick wit to rescue, and she rocks up her sword and her pistol. And then there's my final, which is my favourite. You've got the powder monkey. He's like, amazing. <laughs> it, there's a picture of him coloured, and he's got some flowery shorts on. And it, it really, oh, yeah. it, they go on the box there on the front. Yeah. He's got, I mean, would you look at those shorts? <laughs> so the crazy little monkey, he's going to add some, he looks like he's got a bit of a serious alcohol addiction with his uh, alcohol being <laughs> held onto him. Uh, but he's going to stir up some drama on the table. So he's quite lazy. Very agile. He's got a barrel of bombs, so you're not going to be forgetting him anytime soon. And as I said, you can't, you have to paint those shorts extravagant as you possibly can. Definitely do, yeah. Yeah. So there's several releases over at Goblin King. If you do want to get on your Moonstone, there's loads of new products to dive into and loads to expand on the universe. So mm. quite cool to see what's going on at Moonstone. Very nice. Yeah. The thing that I quite like is what, what Moonstone does and what Goblin King does is they put all the rules. On the on the page, so if you if you're interested yeah. in the characters, you can go and just find out how they work before you buy them. So you can yeah. be like, ah, oh, this would be a good fit for my particular, you know, war band or or trade, yeah. for example. Then you can just have fun with it, which is quite yeah. Nice. That's what's fantastic about the the books, the Arising book. You can have all of them deaded out, so you can just go through each page and see what kind of band you'd like to build. Um, yeah. But they're they're a lot of fun Moonstone minis when they drop. They're certainly whimsical. So I always look forward to seeing these uh, when they're released. So. That's fun. You got you got one of these that you want to paint, John? Uh, is it uh, is it Powder Monkey? <laughs> no. Oh, which one? Which one? Uh, Peggy. Actually. Peggy. Peggy. Peggy's great. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for a good female character. So, mm-hmm. like, I painted Jada, and I loved her. So. Oh, Jada yeah, is yeah. fantastic. I love Peggy as well. Yeah, although she actually reminds me of one of the strangest things I've ever seen on TV. Oh, Someone no. was on Pawn Stars and brought in a peg leg, which actually had. A, uh, a pistol built into it. How it, cool! Uh, it worked. That's, pretty awesome. that's not odd. That's friggin' cool. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> but it was literally like homebrew because when they were that. looking at it, they were going, "All right, so that came off a brown best to actually get the trigger mechanism to work." It's just like you're telling me somebody homebrewed a peg leg pistol. Cool. That's <laughs> like, I would cut my leg off to have that. <laughs> Please don't. That's some kind of like Final Fantasy stuff. That is, that is it. it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. So some amazing uh, Moonstone releases there. Thank you very much, Free. That's very cool. I'm, I'm sure Jerry is kicking himself that he's not here. It's really but, nice, actually, no, to no, be Jerry, taking Jerry's Moonstone. Jerry's not kicking himself. He's recovering <laughs> from St. Paddy's Day. That is true. That Jerry's is true. probably yes. already purchased these. Let's face That's, it. Yes. Jerry's already got yeah, them. We know he's got it. So, uh, yeah, it won't take me too long to be fine. How about you, Ben? Where are we off to? Uh, so next up, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of role playing, uh, but in the Iron Kingdoms. Um, Ooh, this will so, make me happy. Yeah. So uh, the folks over at Privateer Press, you may remember that they launched their Kickstarter for the Iron Kingdoms Requiem campaign setting uh, last year. Well, all of those books, uh, both physically and digitally, are now going to be available for you to pick up uh, from over on their web store. Um, they have all been designed using the fifth edition system. So if you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons? Dungeons and Dragons. Let's just that's say I'll just say D and D. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. D ampersand D. Uh, so yeah. Uh, they've all been designed with that in, in mind. So it uses that sort of basic system, but then it builds on that with all the stuff that you would imagine from the world of Imran and sort of the Iron Kingdoms, sort of throwing in things like the Trollkin and Warcasters and Warjacks and all that kind of stuff as well. So this went down a storm on Kickstarter last year. Everyone really enjoyed the fact that it was coming out and sort of breathed a little bit of life back into the Iron Kingdom system. Um, I know a lot of people really quite liked the the old way of playing that game. I thought it was you know fairly funny. It was a good sort of robust system, but you know, very bespoke and all that kind of thing. But I actually think that switching over to fifth edition is obviously a very good step in the right direction. If you want to kind of port people over from the sort of traditional fantasy setting to something a little bit more weird and wonderful, whilst also keeping things very sort of um, in line with mechanics that you already know. and Yeah, love. a bit more familiar. Yeah, mm. a bit more familiar. So you've got the likes, you can play as things like humans, gobbers, trollkin, rulic dwarves, 
Yes. <laughs> uh, and then maybe even the likes of the Nis as well, the elves in this, nice. this world too, which is quite nice. And then, of course, you wouldn't be a Iron Kings and role playing game if you didn't have the likes of gun mages and all that kind of stuff in there as well. So <laughs> there is a lot of information there in there for people who want to play as these particular kinds of characters. Um, they've really gone to town. We're kind of building up the additional rules for the likes of Warjacks and things. Um, so it uses sort of more traditional kind of like monster stats and stuff like that, but they put in loads of very sort of um, bespoke design mechanics so that everything feels very Iron Kingdoms, which I think is quite nice. Uh, so it's not just basically like having a pet in D&D, which I think is quite good. So they sort of stepped around in it, stepped around that and sort of done something new and interesting for it. Um, obviously, the world of Imran is one filled with interesting monsters and all sorts of different things in it as well. So they've designed a new Monster Nomicon, which I think is a fun name for the book. Nice. Um, I also want to point out that it does something that I really enjoy and they've designed the book for the Monster Nomicon, just like the old third edition D and D ones, where it feels like an in-world artifact. And I love that there's like nice. this idea that like something's just bursting out of the front of it, trying to eat your face. I think it's very fun. I mean, the Monster Book of Monsters. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there is president for it. Yeah. So uh, this has been designed in a nice way. So it's packed out with all sorts of different monsters for you to play and fight against because. If you've not played War Machine or Hordes before, there are some really weird things out there like <laughs> up against, uh, oh, including yeah. walking pumpkin heads and scarecrows and all different Ooh. types of things. So, uh, don't so, don't yeah. forget all of the, the mutated dragon blood beasties. Exactly, yeah. So it's you definitely can remember, Blake, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's something in there for you to put against your party and make sure they quake in their boots, even though they do have a massive warjack looking after them. So, yeah, very cool there. <laughs> See, this um, is the thing. I, I played a game of this years ago, and our DM specifically kept warjacks out of it because he just thought they were OP. Yeah, well, yes. I mean, they are effectively like having another player character, aren't they, in that point? So, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, if you are sort of new to playing Iron Kingdom's Requiem and you want to sort of like get a good in, maybe even as a, as a dungeon master or a games master, then they're also going to be putting together this Legend of the Witchfire adventure. So this was the story or this narrative that kind of came out when Iron Kingdoms was first born and and that role-playing system was first born. And so they've revisited that and made it fifth edition compatible so that you can use that in your game, which I think is really nice. It's got classic undead in it and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, why wouldn't you want to go smashing skeletons in the face? Yeah. That's a pretty cool idea. Yeah. Um, and then in addition to that, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. So you can get your hands on the new GM screen, uh, which comes with all the details that you'd want to play the game on the back of it. Very helpful for uh, game masters starting out again and then also i'm going to open up their web store because there's a whole bunch of other stuff on there hopefully this loads it does so yes <laughs> as i said uh they've got that no i don't want to join you mailing list uh, we've, got, uh, harsh. we've got harsh 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 we've, we've, we've got all the right uh, we've got all the um i don't like pop-ups but damn it anyway so we've got all these sort of physical books but then we've also got the pdfs if you want to get those they're about half the price of the sort of physical versions which is quite nice and they're yeah. always good for references and that kind of thing but then they also do these which i think is really awesome so if you like using miniatures so if you want to dive into the iron kingdoms range and use those miniatures uh, to play out your games and stuff. They've designed all the sort of battle tiles for you to use, That's which great. I think is quite good. Uh, just because Jerry's not here, I have to say it. If you want to play role-playing games the wrong way. Exactly. Do you yeah. believe that? Do you truly? It's our week where we don't have to say it this way. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He might not be here, but he's here in spirit. In yeah. spirit. He's channeling yeah. through the beard. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> channeling through the beard. Wow. Uh, and then you also have these as well. So you've got spell reference cards, a little bit like what you've seen from Gale Force 9 for normal Dungeons and Dragons. Reference cards for the Warjacks and Mechanica stuff as well. And then you've got some sort of additional toolkits and all kinds of things there too. So it's a very nice little set if you're going to be wanting to play out some adventures in the Iron Kingdoms using the 5th edition rules. Um, as I say, it did really well on Kickstarter. It's good to see it now at retail. And uh, I hope a lot of people go and give this a shot because uh, I definitely think it deserves it. I think the 5th edition system is very robust and can be tweaked and changed in all sorts of different ways. And I think because this is a fantasy world in essence, I think it's a good partner, a good sort of like um, way to sort of bring the Iron Kingdom to the tabletop. So yeah, some very just, good stuff on that. Front. I absolutely love the Iron Kingdoms as a setting. Oh I, yeah, yeah. I fell in love with War Machine so hard. I have some of the audiobooks and stuff, and it's just it's yeah. such a an amazing, unique take on steampunk weirdness. Mm. Like mm-hmm. Warjacks are my are my vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are my steampunk tank of <laughs> tank love. So yeah. I, well, I mean it's magic but also have you seen the war jack they're rather lovely <laughs> yeah it's magic but it's a magic powered tank that has the essentially the consciousness of a dog yeah like, it's it's yeah. great it's, it'll play fetch with you and punch <gasps> the bad guys. yeah <laughs> Dreaming. 
Yeah. I need War Machine to come back. I need yeah. War Machine yeah. back in my life. <laughs> it's mean, a very cool game. Yeah. I'm happy to dive back into some Signar. We need to find all the models again. Yeah, true. Kador is the way forward. Kador. I have Kador. Massive, huge, clanking war jacks. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they look even more like tanks than most things. So there we go. Why do you think <laughs> I like them? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so stepping from one fantasy world to another, uh, Free, I believe there's some new stuff coming out for Lord of the Rings, the mm-hmm. Living Card game. Yeah, so I've been playing through Lord of the Rings, the Living Card game recently. And after I have had the core box uh, for a mighty long time, it's really interesting for me to see the new releases that are being supported in in the revised edition. So now starter decks have made their way out to release and they're providing new ways for beginners to actually stand a chance against the unforgiving world of Lord of the Rings card game. So there's no new cards, um, but it's producing a thematic setup past the core box. So there's more ways for you to pitch in in a cooperative fashion. So it's four different sets. We've got the Dwarves of Durin, the Elves of Florian, the Defenders of Gondor, and the Riders of Rohan. So all of which are incorporating a new play style and flexing particular themes um, in spheres of influence. So if you like a swarm deck... Tiny bitches. I know, they're so small. If you yeah. like stupid a swarm fantasy, deck... Stupid fantasy flight games, but anyway, dwarf. sorry. <laughs> Do you play the dwarves? Do you play the dwarves in order to car game? I have made a dwarven deck in... Yeah. Uh, of course I have. Uh, yeah, well, and it yeah. works exceptionally well. <laughs> sure. Although my, my, my favourite deck has been my Ent deck. But I, I, I will deck go is unbelievable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the swarm deck is when, you, if you want to do plus swarm deck, you're good with the dwarves because they'll help you keep on top of everything. So they've got strength, you're bringing your mighty axes. And it can, this set in particular will contain a series of dwarves scattered across loads of different release titles. So you will have Feely, Keely, Day 9 for ETC. So it is more of a savage play style. It's a lot of fun when you can get all of your dwarves working together like a well oiled team. You've got the <laughs> elves of Lorien. So they're bringing more tactics to the table. So they've got like kind of more of a sneaky wood elf finesse. So you're getting the likes of Celeborn, uh, Galadriel, and Haldir in the deck. And they prove to work well with their Sylvian allies. So you're going to be able to return cards back and forth into the play area um, when trouble really does hit the fan. Uh, Gondor Gondor are some of my favourite uh, cards. A lot of my favourite cards come from Gondor. Um, they're great if you like living your life on the edge. Um, so they're often my tank cards. They're great hack and slash uh, so you can get through your enemies. It's a great tactic. It comes with a great gamble, though, if you are playing just with Gondor. Uh, You can sometimes overrun the prestige of Gondor and you're going to need some tactics behind your front line um, to stop you being completely knocked out by uh, the Dark Forces. But if you do it right, the payoff is incredibly rewarding. Um, And if you're in trouble... Rohan will certainly answer as well. So they've got cavalry-based tactics. Uh, Riders of Rohan play really well with tactical play. So they are hard hitters, but they're more hit and run. So Mm -hmm. their leaving effects will hang around after they've left the area. So if you are keen on taking a look at these packs and you've already purchased the expansions already, don't worry, as I said, there's no new cards in these decks. They've just been pulled together to allow players with a starter pack pass the core box and venture into the wild and go about it. So let's face it, the core box does nothing at the minute, but tell you that you need more cards. And this is exactly (laughs) what this does. Um, So if you are looking for a specialised deck that matches your play style and want to delve deeper into the Lord of the Rings without having to pick up packs here and there and trying to build your own, the starter decks are going to be great because you're going to be able to cooperate in a challenge as you stumble on new characters as you're going for the adventure and adding on as you go along, um, especially past the core set because the core set pre-made decks uh, are pretty much just to get you immersed in learning so, everything yeah. about the yeah. sphere. The thing, the thing that I quite like about these is that it's kind of teaching you, in essence, the way of, to deal with deck building as well because yeah. it looks like it's combining two is it two spheres two spheres it looks like yeah, yeah. so yeah so you've got a you've got a nice sort of guide to sort of starting out and making your own decks perhaps past this but i think i think as you say this is a really good way to sort of reintroduce people to the new version yeah. of the game because yeah. you're obviously doing that new version of the set which comes with the added addition of kind of like the questing stuff in there as well which yeah. is quite nice yeah and the then having, in there. yeah and so having things like this 
to then be the next step while you then attach, you know, have a go at the sort of Forest of Mirkwood th- cycle yeah. and that kind of thing. I think, I think really where these, we, these would be a lot of fun was if you are playing cooperative and somebody gets a Rohan deck and somebody yeah, gets yeah. a Dwarf deck. So if you are cooperating, you can bring those themes together to kind of overcompass what you need to do. I do think it'd be quite hard playing with a one particular theme um, because loads of different factions swap in swap out it's a great way to get a full scope so i do feel like if you were going to buy these solo it might be quite difficult to stick with one particular theme but if you are cooperating it's a great way to get some unknown themes and factions into it uh, yeah, and definitely. learning and yeah, learning yeah. what your best play style was for the game as well and so. if you want to learn how to play the game and sort of what it's all about free has done an amazing series of articles over the last sort of few, few months showing off uh, your adventures and things. So yeah. definitely go and check that out. It even features poor Pascal. So, you know. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah. He's a nightmare. He jumps on the table all the time when I have to. <laughs> he knows it's dinner time past a certain point as well. I mean, so. have you locked him out today? <laughs> Today I have, yeah. Okay. Good choice. <laughs> he only gets let in for XLBS. He I does only that. get uh, let in for XLBS. He's only allowed, otherwise it cause too much of a havoc. This yeah. would be down by now. The previous for any, XLBS for anyone, was attacking. For anyone who hasn't watched XLBS, it just sounds like we're talking about someone called Pascal that we use as like a <laughs> strange weekend of monkey or something. <laughs> yeah, I let him in. Yeah. No, Pascal is my cat. And he does yeah. very much uh, <laughs> fight on the side of Sauron when it comes to being there. Uh, <laughs> Going through Lord of the Rings, but they have been released early uh, this week. So if you are keen on expanding past the course, uh, adding more cards to your deck and just getting in the ways, like Ben said, of learning how to deck build. Um, and you've not, not dipped into too many expansions. It's a great way to add some characters to your collection as well. Cool. Uh, so we're finishing things off uh, for this week's news with a little bit of Games Workshop because we have to talk about them because you can buy them from us. It's great. Uh, we have some new combat patrols on the way for you to pick up. So these have been teased already, so uh, we won't gild the lily too much when it comes to these. But uh, there are two new combat patrols, one for the Grey Knights, uh, which you can see there, which comes with a whole host of uh, fantastic um, demon slaying individuals. You get your Grey Knights in the, the Terminator armor. You get five Grey Knights in Terminator armor as well. You then get five Grey Knights that can be brought in a various selection of different uh, configurations you can build them as a strike team an intercept team a purify team or a purgation squad if you want to which is quite nice and then you also have the nemesis dread knight in the background as well sort of lording over things with that pretty cool sword <laughs> i do like the sword <laughs> uh i don't like the baby carrier space marine yeah that's quite uh, interesting <laughs> no one ever has yeah, yeah no one but, ever uh, has <laughs> I think it's very cool, especially if you did some kind of like kit bashing with that in particular. But it's a very nice little set. I think this one very elite. Uh, I've seen someone convert the Dread Knight to be orcified, which was quite cool. I was oh, going to say cool. it would be good if someone could steal it and, and wield it. If that oh, the, trust the orcs can steal and loot. Yeah, can, they can they can loot a, a Carnifex. <laughs> we'll yeah, say, it's a, it's about damn time the combat patrol for Grey Knights did come out because yes. it's a. I just it may be my third army. Ooh, maybe. Ooh, I, I gotta say, I think there is there is something about the Grey Knight aesthetic that I think is really fun, and I think yeah. it would be really fun to paint. Are yeah, you gonna do them in a, in a traditional style or something different? Yes, or? I I have a test many already done. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh! Of course you do. Oh, better. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so as well as the Grey Knights, um, the sort of other side of the coin, uh, we've got sort of psychers that are anti psychers, but then also psychers that are like, I love psychers. We have the uh, Thousand Suns on the other side. I don't know what I was doing there. Um, so this is a new set that's kind of like builds on what came uh, as part of a, um, a sort of like big boxed, big box battle game a couple of months ago. Yeah, lots of things. So <laughs> yeah, so this uh, comes with your five Scarab Occult Terminators the Infernal Master that you saw at the front there as well, which is pretty awesome. And then you get all of those Zangors. So you've got like this... are completely useless now. Yes, these are utterly useless. This this disappoints me slightly. I just want more Rubric Marines in this box. Yeah, I know a lot of people would have liked maybe 
tens angles and then that's like a squad of five or something for the Rubik Marines so that yeah, would be pretty cool but, um, uh, yes you get more minis in this but it, it feels like you're getting less because you don't have that like a big centerpiece miniature with it yeah. 20 of them are completely useless out of the 26 in the box <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's, not, let's not gild the lily here at all this, this is yeah. not the strongest yeah. combat patrol no. the, the, the Grey Knights one is, is pretty fun but I think this one would probably take a little bit of tweaking uh, uh, this, maybe, that would, maybe this would be for finesse players but well, this, this one for me fell short of the mark of where I would want yeah. it. Yeah. Cool if you collect chaos demons as well, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, it should be noted, obviously, that these are named as uh, combat patrols, so these are all done sort of so you can kind of essentially play them out of the box. This is obviously done to their power rating rather than sort of points or anything, but it kind of gives you a sort of like stepping stone into the game. So yeah. this should be relatively balanced. Whether that that's really the case is well. Depends on the faction you're picking, but uh, yeah, some pretty cool well, stuff in there. Also, like Alvin kind of goes burr. <laughs> it's a good joke. It's a really good joke. Anyway, <laughs> uh, as well as the two combat patrols that we see there, we've also got two releases for the couple of plastic miniatures that are coming out as well. Oh. Um, so you've got Castle and Crow, who uh, is finally. Just amazing. Um, Give he, me him now. <laughs> he, he was available in the, the box game that I was talking about uh, from yep. a couple of months ago, but now he's available separately. Uh, you can either have him in uh, this format with the helmet on his head, or you can change things out and just have him with his bare head as well, which is pretty cool. Oh, he's um, so good. I love the demon sword. You can't yes. really see yeah, it very well. That's so yeah. why a Grey Knight is wielding a demonic weapon. Because, he <laughs> because he's so badass. That's why. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Read his lore, dude. Read his lore. <laughs> his lore's great. He's insane. That's oh, cool. Just yeah. Aren't they all? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. So you've got Castle and Crow there, and then obviously the uh, Infernal Master, which was the other miniature that was available in that Combat Patrol and the big box game is now separate as well. Summoning demons from the rift to do battle on the tabletop. Very, uh, I, I'm getting kind of like cow elf vibes mm. from this guy with yeah. this sort of like weird backpack and stuff. See, whatever way they painted this, this <laughs> looks more like a 3D render than an actual miniature. It does weirdly, actually, doesn't it? It, does. it? it, it looks yeah. like it doesn't really fit together. Which is yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it's very <laughs> weird looking. As if, it's the um, cape, I think, that's doing yeah. it for me. Yeah, I, I, and that fire, the way they paint the fire. The flash of burgundy is just distracting me a little yes. bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, I don't uh, know, there, there's yeah. something very uncanny valley going on here. Yeah. <laughs> the interesting thing about this, though, is it kind of obviously fits into the, the idea that the Chaos Space Marines wear slightly more of that archaic armour that mm -hmm. they wore back during the heresy so this kind oh, of yeah. like fits into that so yeah that's like a mark three armor i think yeah so if you've got some uh horus heresy plastics for example or maybe from the new horus heresy plastic stuff set that's not coming out but probably is <laughs> um I, 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 I honestly don't I, I honestly don't know but anyway <laughs> uh, this, could, this could be a really good fit for that if you want to kind of do something sort of horus heresy and uh a uh, thousand suns obviously just paint them in a different color because obviously you need to do them in red i think it's red wasn't it red yeah it was. thousand suns yeah, it so, was. yeah some fun stuff there but yeah so it's some really fun stuff there for uh 40k well some moder moderately cool stuff for john to play with in mm -hmm. 40k in the near future some really nice miniatures as part of those combat patrols and those new characters as well uh it's a nice little sort of um entry point for people who maybe missed out on the uh, box game when it released last year but uh, yeah they're finally sort of catching up with themselves games so far and the Tyranid one shouldn't be too far away which should be quite nice to dive about into the crow um, is that close do you think as, as, as much <laughs> as don't, Lloyd, don't talk about the crew <laughs> they've as just had Lloyd, their Codex no, there's no more crew coming <laughs> there's nothing else coming uh, well, you never know. If Lloyd bugs the people in the kind of like oh, chat yeah. enough, maybe they will eventually get around to recent crew. We'll I'm, 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 I'm honestly amazed he hasn't started a petition. <laughs> give it time. You know, it open time. letter to Games yeah. Workshop. Please yeah. give yes. Yeah. When, maybe we should make Lloyd do that now he's got his new place. We should do that. Yeah. <laughs> Surround him with Crute and then just let him go. That'd be the way to go. But yeah. So yeah, uh, that was the uh, news uh, for this week. Hopefully you saw something there that was quite interesting that you want to dive into a little bit more detail. You can always check out the links in the description down below if you want to follow a little bit more of the news and see what else we've been talking about. Some really interesting stuff that came out this week that we didn't manage to fit into this weekend. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take a little bit of a break and then we're going to be back to talk about 3D printing and how much of a shiznash it is. So yeah, see you soon. So we are back to dive into the last section of this week's show, and we're going to be exploring the wonderful and amazing world of 3D printing with <laughs> 3D printing is the shit. 
you don't know what I actually said. Is that last one? <laughs> You're really trying hard to be theatric in this episode. I have, have to. I have he to make to. up for the amazing and voluptuous Jerry. That the absence of Jerry. Whoa, yeah. whoa. When did Jerry become voluptuous? He's a sexy man. Uh, uh, do- <laughs> okay, man. Okay. Yeah. Hey, he, he, he feeds me indie games and indie miniatures. So, you know, he, he has. So, what? Like, love, so. like sweet chocolates on a chaise long? Yeah, you yes. call indie. Indie, yeah. my love. Yeah. Yeah. Chef kiss. Yeah. Pretty much. But anyway, back to miniatures. That got weird. Uh, we, uh, so, uh, as I was saying, we're going to be looking at some 3D printing stuff uh, at the moment. And yeah. um, after last week, you would be forgiven for thinking that we all just care about Murkborg and amazing uh, dark, twisted fantasy stuff. Um, but actually, you're right. Uh, because I'm <laughs> a company that does amazingly twisted and weird stuff called Bestarium or Bestarium, however you want to say it. Bestarium. How twisted are we talking, Ben? Oh, so twisted. And I think Justin's way of, exp- of saying the title is the best way to go. So uh, this is... Go for it, Justin. Bestarium. There we go. I'm going to get... Can we just now sound cap or whatever? Like, <laughs> cap to capture that and then Oh, put God, that someone's going to put that it. on a soundboard. Yeah, and yeah. Every, it's just going to be... Ba, 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 ba. Bestarium. <laughs> YouTube will clip this. Yeah, yeah. So Bestarium Miniatures uh, has been around for, for since last year, but they do a range of fantastic-looking and Ooh. utterly grotesque miniatures for you to use in your role-playing games, in your uh, tabletop war games, skirmish games, whatever you are. Halloween so decorations. Yeah. Halloween, Halloween decorations, yeah. I mean, um, Valentine's Day gift. You could Exactly, you know, ev- everyone's got a king. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Wow. So these are just, think Diablo, think uh, sort of Dark Souls, and then mush That's that together. Grim with twisted Warhammer art and design from the olden days uh, and then a little bit of Morkborg and all that kind of stuff as well. And that's when you get these amazing miniatures, as you can see here. I mean, do um, you remember the old Wesley Snipes Blade movie? Oh, I what do. Balthazar inside? Yeah. Are you talking about Balthazar? The, yeah, the, the Asian vampire that was just like a puddle. Yes. <laughs> that, is, that is very, yes. Yeah, I think that works quite nicely there. <laughs> But um, yeah, like everything that they've done Ooh. is perfectly awesome for anyone kind of looking to do sort of wow. twisted and weird wargaming on the tabletop. Um, I think, as I say, <laughs> this would be perfect for anyone who's doing more Borg and that kind of thing because it just fits that so nicely. But I think you could, I, this is the kind of stuff that I think people who are interested in the uh, 28 movement would be really fascinated by. So that's kind of looking at sort of old sort of Blanchitsu style stuff. Like imagine that painted up in a Blanchitsu style with like oh. yellows and sort of warm reds and all that kind of thing. That'd be amazing. See, yeah, I, so. I would do these guys in like acid greens and do like an awesome Nurgle right. army. Yeah, yeah, that's a great that idea. Be, yeah, I think that would be amazing. I mean, look at that. Oh my God. Yeah. That's definitely a hug. See, I'm just looking at a strange <laughs> place in there. <laughs> Strange places they've got ears and stuff, you know, the, the odd places. There's an ear at the top of the head next to the eyes that looks like the start of the head. Yeah. There's even it. little there's even people crawling out Ooh. of its maw and everything as well, which I think is really nice. It's so cool. It's sinister, isn't it? I mean, French kiss on the first date. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you get out. <laughs> What's quite nice about these as well is that they come with this kind of sculpted base design as well. So you mm. get the model, but then you also get the base too, which is really nice. That's yeah. Really cool, sort of addition to that. Um, let's have a scroll down through, see if there's any more that sort of catch your eye. Oh, I love this one. I'm going to go for this one. Oh, undead Knights. Yeah, oh. go down one from the Undead Knights. Oh. Uh, there. Hammer there. Knights. That one? Hammer oh, Knights. Yeah. Want to see those. Yeah. Stop Hammer Time. I'm going to get the Wolf of Calden because I think that's pretty cool as well. So look at that as well. I mean, look at that. Oh. oh. That's Golem. straight out of Doom. It, yes. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The wings are beautiful. I'm also going to say, one piece, no need to assemble. Whoa, that's Ooh. great. That, that's an interesting challenge. Yeah. Is it that's pre-scaffolded great. or no? Uh, uh, well, it probably is, yeah. Pre-supported or there non-supported. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you have both options. Perfect. Because yeah. trying to support something like that in one shot would take quite a while. Well, yeah. Justin, those of us who are 3D printing experts. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I finally yeah the, the, in fact, public. there's a the thing. This is the first time the two 3D printers from the main office <laughs> are in the same... I was going to say, I defer to yeah, John on all things 3D printing now, I'm afraid. So, yeah. <laughs> to, to be fair, to be, to be blatantly fair, 
if there's if there's people supplying 3D STL like STLs now for miniature collectors mm. who aren't making them pre-supported, oh yeah, I wouldn't trust them because if they know how the supports work for their own miniature, then they've engineered it correctly. Yeah, you know they haven't just made something cool and just thrown it out oh, there. They've yeah. actually thought it through. Oh, oh shields are amazing. They are yeah. so. That is like World of Warcraft undead, like friggin' oh. It's like druggers on acid. Yeah, the eyes are the, fantastic. Oh, the yeah. I like that. That's that's a really nice way. I think that'd be a really cool way to paint them. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I liked it. Uh, you were saying they're just in the Draugr theme of that kind of like almost emaciated body. I think it's a really cool look oh. rather than making them normal skeletons. I think that's a really cool mm-hmm. sort of addition. Yeah. I wish this pop up would go away. <laughs> you need to get ad blocker. Yeah. But yeah, amazing stuff there. I think that I think, uh, as you say, yeah. here are those hammer knights. Oh, man. Yes. All of my yes. Oh, and they're oh, carrying oh. a massive coffin on their back. Yeah. Now imagine you were playing Turnip Twenty Eight or Sludge. Yeah. Those would be amazing for that. Just Again, to, imagine, they would. Yeah. I would just use them as straight up chaos warriors. You could, yeah, yeah. I'd love to see someone making um, make an order army for Age of Sigma, mm. but use these as Stormcast. Oof. Imagine that. Yeah, like that could really work. twisted, That's horrible versions of them yeah. that maybe like live in <laughs> Shaiish or something. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. I mean, what would you even begin to call that weapon in the middle? A double mace, a, a mace stick, um, mm. a, a flail with two, a flail with two S's. <laughs> or do they remember. have reverse jointed legs? <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. Well, they have yeah, they yeah. have like demonic feet. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Very. Yeah, that, any shoes to that weapon in the middle is the two for one brain removal device. Oh. That'll do uh. it. Ah, what have you done? <laughs> I don't know. I've left all the pretty things Stop behind. Stop clicking. Oh, look at leave this yes. armor. <laughs> So here's the Wolf of Caden. I think that's amazing. I like the way they're doing a regular scale beside it. Yes. So that's yes. like, a, that, I'd say that's like what? Yeah. 32 you know what mil this is? normally. So, yeah. This is what Lehman Russ looks like when he comes back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got the wolf armor, but it's almost standing on wolf legs. Yes. That's yeah. really cool, yeah. Yeah. Kind of fits into that weirdly quite bestial look. I think it's quite a <laughs> beautiful mm. look. It's got like yeah. a pole arm sword. Yeah. Of some description. Like a big, yeah, it's like almost a sword but also a spear at the same time. Yeah, mm. it's very nice. But like, I, I just love how like twisted and yeah. me- metal these actually are. It's such oh, a cool yeah. Yeah. I mean, they wouldn't be far off sitting on front of a Metallica album. Yeah. So we've got all that one. Not heavy. Heavy. Sorry. <laughs> we saw that one as well. We saw that one and we saw that one. So this is another one of the ranges that I wanted to dive into as well. So they, as I said, they do kind of stuff that's been designed for D and D. So these are D and D characters, but with a Bestarium sort of twist. Bestarium. Nice. Bestarium. <laughs> yes, you've got I, you just need to put that on every time I say oh. Bestarium. Bestarium. <laughs> yeah. So this is kind of like cleric, paladin, oh. uh, like a fighter, and like a, a sorcerer mage. But oh. done in their style, so they're like properly like Dark Souls and yeah. twisted and horrible and weird. I am loving that sort of like druid style with the armor. Yeah, mm-hmm. really cool. not even like they're that horrible. They just look like utter badass. They do. Yeah. yeah, this this is the amoral like lawful evil party. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think like, that we're rocking into your village. Of course, we're going to save the day, but you know we're. We're probably going to rob you while we're here. Too. Okay, people will saying. probably get slaughtered in the crossfire again. Oh, wow. <sighs> That's the demons that he's tethered to himself. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I like uh, I think I like to think that like inside that staff that he's got, that's actually like a fairy or something that he's enclosed in like a an iron maiden. <laughs> yeah. And like, every time he loves someone, the, the fairy inside gets stabbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what gives him his power, like this emaciated, twisted, bloody fairy or something. Man, I'm loving this too much. This is great. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> and look, here's the character sheets for you to use them in the game. That's oh, fantastic. That's cool. That cool. So you can use them in fifth edition, which is really mm-hmm. nice. How cool is that? Very cool. Darius, yes. the fist, cleric war domain. Yeah, very cool. Seven. Here's some more of the heroes as well. Oh, so, oh wow. nice. that's a cute puppy. Let's see what they've decided this one is. Uh, oh, I can't see that, but we'll, we'll open it up and have a look at it. I mean, we, we've all played D&D. We can work this out. Barbarian. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Bard. Bard. Bard, yes. Bard. Uh, and Ranger. Ranger, because of the uh, animal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How cool is that? I mean, that's just an amazing look for a barbarian. 
Mm-hmm. Just like this horrible, twisted individual. He's got cool. muscles on muscles that shouldn't he does. be muscles. Yeah. Yeah. A lo- look, look at that bard. He just looks oh, so I know. sparky. <laughs> just like, like- you want me to play a song? Are you insane? <laughs> <laughs> He will hit you with his accordion. Yeah. I like that he's um, he's cleaner than the others. Yeah, like he actually cares yes, about he, himself. He's a bard. He's char- charismatic to the T. Yeah, and he's carrying like almost a katana. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Well, like a drinking saber horn. Sort of thing. A drinking <laughs> horn as well. Yeah. And there's also that Slavic influence there as well, which I think is quite nice. Mm-hmm. It kind of like goes down that route rather than a traditional sort of sort of Western European. Start mm. of a bard, which is quite cool. That, and again, that, that mutt is amazing. Oh. The scar on the face of the barbarian. I will cool. name him yeah. Fluffy. Well, <laughs> Justin, the ranger has an arrow. Yes, this makes me happy, so I didn't have to mention it. <laughs> Although the arrow is going through the bowstring for some reason. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're the one that brought this up. This is Let's your fault. I blame it. you. And then this is the last oh. bit of their lone heroes that they did, oh. which is from the first edition of this. Oh, I love that. Love the Sorry. barbarian in the back. The, yeah. No, the dude up front with the helmet that has the creepiest eye holes. Yeah. yeah. That feels like, you know, medieval Bioshock to me. Mm. Mm. And then you've well, got you... a very nice rogue there as well. Yeah. I like the idea of doing that guy and then have blood like trickling out of the eye oh. socket. Or oh, something. yeah. Then oh. stop selling this to us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, John, you do have a 3D printer. That like. wizard at the back is gorgeous. Yeah. And here you can see if, it if you could engineer it, you could actually get some LEDs into the, the eyes. Oh, oh yeah, wow, that's a yeah. great. Pill cool. green or yellow. Print mm-hmm. or oh, drink the iron jaw. Yeah. Like that, that guy kills. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You're I love a that wizard. Fire speaker. That's a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> that's... that like. Gorgeous, yeah. emaciated, twisted wizard kind of thing they going on there as well. A thousand years gathering still, my power. Still a fair amount of whimsy around him, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 there is. Yeah, yeah. But that, it's again, the hood, that... I think. The hood yeah. is what yeah. sounds yeah. the whimsy. It's still yeah, it's, very clearly a wizard. It's kind of a blend between a wizard's hat and a hood, with yeah. a big pointy bit up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see where right. you're coming from. Someone, someone actually pointed out something quite interesting about Grimdark and how, like why Warhammer is so successful in doing it is because they do, as you say, they present a horrible, nasty, twisted scenario, mm. but then there's like an element of dark humour. So you meet an orc, yes, he's going to kill you, but he'll talk about how much he hates his Zoggin friends or something <laughs> as he does it, you know. Well, I mean, there was yeah. the time that Kathias Kian was hiding in a bush and an orc relieved himself in well, exactly. on yeah. him. Yeah, and so I think you have to have those kind of moments of almost levity, almost in, in mm. the design of things. Like with the barbarian there, yeah, he looks like he's going to kill you, but he's got like a weird, wicked grin on his face, so he's yes. probably like told himself a horrible joke or something before he kills no, you. No, what's happened there is he's came into the tavern and they've said we're out of eel, well, that, oh, yeah, that's and that's how it all kicked off. No, 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 he's just walked up to his marker when axe to meet you. Because <laughs> he wouldn't be very intelligent. He's the kind he of guy trying. Yeah. In, a, in an RPG that will walk up to anything in a pub and go, that's mine, and then just yeah. walk away. He's that guy. Yeah. You wouldn't question him. You, no intimidation needed. Is he? Yeah. Although, while we're on the subject of DD, are you guys all caught up with Vox Machina? I am, yes. Yeah. Oh, so good. I've actually started listening to the podcasts. It's very good. It's yeah, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're, they're sl- well, actually, no, their latest campaigns have been quite twisted and weird. Which is nice. Nice, but, uh, so, yeah, as I say, these guys have been around since, like, last year. So they've been doing a lot over the last 12 Makes or so sense. months at the moment. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to highlight a few of these. If you see any that catch your eye again, just please let me know. But uh, some very nice stuff in here that I think is very Oh, what's the Desert of the Giant Skull? There's a the giant Desert bird. of the Giant Skull. That- Bro, that, that you're one. on second one in there. Yeah. Let's like, look at that first for you. So Quite here's a Zinchian. <laughs> yeah, Zinchian, Zinchian Egyptian. Oh look, Zinchian. there's Dwayne the Rock Johnson <laughs> up in the back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's the Scorpion King. That is, oh, that is the smallest photo. Tiny in the world. Ooh, those are cool. Oh, they're cool. nice. Yeah. Really nice assassin. Oh, That's look, great. the feet. The feet are... Oh, I mm. love the feet. Yeah, with the crow's claws. Because that could almost be human until you look down. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the that's the maybe just bells. literally on their boot. Yeah. No. Maybe. Oh, very, very cool. Could be, though. You are correct. Questionable. There we go. There's your big <laughs> scorpion riders. Well, well scorpion centigors. Cent- <laughs> centip- centipedes? 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 I don't know. <laughs> 
bit something. Four tars. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. 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 yeah that that will Four go. Four tars. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. wow. Some really nice action poses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is Again, very Sculpey and King, that one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nice to have the sculpted bases, but then all these, as you say, these sort of elements that make it feel more action-packed. Mm-hmm. So it looks like they're in the midst of battle. Because, yeah. I mean, they'll, you've got to be careful with those when you're packing them. But <laughs> yeah. but even the way they've they've sculpted the armour onto that particular character, yeah, you can yes. see it's literally just a breastplate that has been strapped onto. I mean, you can see all of the skin and stuff. It yeah. feels like its own separate component. Yeah. Really nice design. All the rippling and the muscles oh, wow. and the veins and things. Oh yeah. yeah. It's been Again, stuff stuff that you'd hope would come out through in the uh, the final sculpts, the final <laughs> prints as well. So mm. yeah. Oh, this well, is mostly yeah. when you see them like this, chances are good that it will come through. Yeah, I think that actually is. Well, I'm not sure. I couldn't tell for sure, but uh, yeah, mm. very nice. And uh, we've also got some of these. So we had these ones, which I think are really nice and very dark soulsy again. Mm-hmm. Like very nice feral in a way, aren't they? Yeah. Like regal looking. Almost Diablo esque as well, actually. Mm. Yeah. So, got those. And this was one of the other big sets that I thought was really nice, actually. So, this is a big collection of sort of twisted and weird stuff that they've been working on. Oh. Every, everything's twisted and weird. <laughs> but, but yeah, so you've got sort of your, like, your hangers on that have been sort of uh, attacked by weird things and turned into minions and things. I mean, and stuff. it kind of feels like a necromancer has went out to make friends. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They may not. I mean, look at that. <sighs> That makes an enslaved off. moose. Mm. Is that with a lesson? It a could be. Person lesson? Hanging out the front with the spear? Yeah, yeah, the victim, yeah. Oh, God. But it's the oh. fact that, like, this was obviously some mighty creature, but these little kind of, like, brain slugs have kind of attached themselves to them and have twisted them and turned them into horrible creatures that mm. go hunting on the moors and things. You are flesh puppet now. And look at that, yeah. It's like, oh. Oh, my God. That's yeah. great. That's petrifying. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna buy some of these, John? <laughs> oh, this is this is the complete opposite of what I usually oh, go yeah. for. So yeah. sadly, not no. no. Oh my I mean, god! Look at that and that. Yeah, one. Oh. that's great. Yeah, you could do such a good like zombie horde with these. You really well, you, yeah. well, as well as that, the sci-fi. Well, not particularly sci-fi, but space as well. You could do something older, uh, something biological. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could like, like yeah, you could just remove something like the shield there, yeah. and that's like combat, like almost like archaic combat arm or something. Yeah, make well, those I mean, into, like if, shock sticks or something. And stuff. If you paint it up like it's say a Kevlar plate that he's wearing, yeah, yeah, easily get over something. I mean, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. alien feels and things. It's grim. It's yeah. beautifully grim. So, um, as you can see here, as part of the collection, uh, they have a whole range of um, different things for you to pick up. As they've been going for a year or so <laughs> until this point, and they look like they have no signs of stopping. I know oh. a, lot, a lot of people have been diving into this and painting them up for their own uh, amusement uh-huh. on the tabletop. I know there was a particular model in here that I think everyone has been printing on Etsy. Uh, that's that guy there. There, I'll show. I'll just show him off. Look at that. Oh. I oh wanted to be a church, but Mama said no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at the, the end of the spear with the hand like this. Bless you, my yeah. child. Oh, this is like Pyramid's head finest cousin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A religious cousin. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Amazing lo- stuff. Loads crossbow with religious intent. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, like so- the power of Christ be with you. <laughs> As well as the, the bundles and things, they also have their tribe. Um, so a lot of um, creators now will obviously have their patrons and their My Mini Factory, but tribe is the kind of My Mini Factory, is mm-hmm. the kind of Patreon within My Mini Factory for you to go and mm-hmm. check out. Um, so they've got stuff that comes out every month. Uh, the most recent one was the Penitent oh. Crusade, which you see there. There is actually a better picture of that that I'll find in a second as I scroll through. Uh, let me just go and find it while I'm chatting away. Um, here waffle, we go. waffle, waffle, waffle. Oh, there we go. That was the... Uh, that's the March bundle that you can pick up. Oh, so if you're interested in playing around with twisted and weird religious occult sort of stuff, not going on all, all I'm well, hearing is bring out your dad, bring yeah. out your dad. You know I'm not quite dead actually, yet. You know, what all this is actually reminding me of it's it's kingdom death with more humans in it. Mm. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It? it's just more, it's kingdom death, just really, really more yeah. humanized twistedness. Oh, look at the, the barbed hook weapons down the center front there. Yeah. Those are terrifying. Mm-hmm. Will it load? Come on, too big. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, get a lot in there. 
Well, what's quite nice about it is that you get the character models and then you get the because obviously these are 3D prints you can print them out as many times as you like but you mm-hmm. get four of those duplicate that up you know to a squad of 12 or something that's yeah. your unit of warriors in pretty much any fantasy game basically I mean so you could do like a dark empire yeah, yeah. take yeah. for Warhammer Fantasy if you wanted to go yeah. back to the old world very much so yeah uh, but they've, they've obviously got that coming out this month uh, they also do they're also working on a revamp of some one of their uh older kits so there's this one which is going to get re uh, has, has been sort of twisted and updated i've said twisted so many times <laughs> twisted that what is so bad when the dungeon yeah. comes for you exactly yeah. yes yeah, it's amazing that, oh wow um, i've just seen the bodies in the middle of in the cage oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the belly and like a, the other guy with the hands are actually the cages yeah it's like a bloody wicker man <laughs> <laughs> that's terrifying um, uh, uh, but yeah but so, if you join them on Tribe, uh, you can obviously get your hands on these uh, particular miniatures. But they also have this free welcome pack. That these, so this is all the things you get for free when you sign up to their Patreon. Uh, well, not Patreon, their Tribe. You get all of those bi- different bits and pieces to try out as soon as you get started, which is pretty cool. You can also buy them separately if you like, but you get a big one and then also a couple of sort of smaller miniatures and then the terrain features as well. Uh, but it's a pretty um, awesome looking one to go and check out. So... If you're interested in 3D printing something uh, evil for using your <laughs> games of uh, Merkburg on the tabletop, then I would recommend going to check out Bistarium. Say it again, there we hey. go. There we go. Uh, <laughs> pick those up and use those on the tabletop. Some really fun stuff for you to have a look at there. But I think uh, you'll agree, it's pretty cool. And uh, as is the case, they've been around for a while now. They're on Facebook and all those kind of um, social media platforms and that kind mm-hmm. of thing. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more and more, more about their range, maybe seeing some people paint them up yourselves, there's loads of links on there for socials and that kind of thing. So you can go and um, have fun talking with the rest of the community that has been uh, playing around with those miniatures as well. So, yeah. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim center over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. We're going to get a little bit more whimsical and happy well like, more light-hearted now a little bit more light-hearted yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, Free you're about to tell us about a uh, crowdfunding campaign from over on GameFound that everyone should go and check out mm-hmm. so if you enjoy your fantasy and want to step into the role of the Mighty Druid Oak is on Game Found by uh, Game Bureau at the moment. So you've got Flex Strategy and you're taking one to four players are going to be in taking the role as Druidic Leaders. So they're in charge of their own order. So jobs don't fly out of thin air. They're going to need to take guidance from the sacred tree. So the tree doesn't give its aid old knowledge freely. Therefore, players have got to prove their worth by meeting objectives and hope to gain the secrets that the tree holds. So how do you prove yourself to a tree? That is the question. So a lot of (laughs) druids will be heading out on several different trips and temples collecting artefacts. And all this unlocks hidden powers, which will send the player into conversation with mythical creatures that are going to need your help. So all of which establishes the place of worship so the order can grow uh, in strides and hope to create prosperity across all of the lands. I just want to mention what Ben has seen there. Yes, they are little add-ons to your meeples. That's so, so you... cool. <laughs> it's <laughs> just <laughs> adorable. Um, so more of board that's covered, you'll get more grips uh, and more that your order will become into. So missions start small, but more power comes to the order and responsibilities will grow the further you go in the game, just to make sure that you are truly committed to the tree. Um your leaders, as I said, is going to get upgraded into Elder Druids uh, and they have a wider uh, span of influence that can upgrade actions later on in the game. And as I said, the different Druidic clothing pieces that you can add that represent that is just darling. They're, they're fantastic. I really do love the additions to the maples. So they make their way up the oak tree and meet the demands of the wishes of the tree across three turns of the day. So at the end of the day, they'll even need to go out and forage and get potions together to help the weird and wonderful creatures that are lurking across the forest. So you've got to gear up for the Solstice Festival, keep watch over the sun, and by the end of the fifth round, players will tally up all of their influence and do good to the done around the environment 
And the person with the most devoted knowledge uh, is the winner, depending on how much success they have in their order. So there's two different pledges, nice and simple on the campaign. You can get mitts on uh, the retail copy, uh, which is the bottom, uh, which will be able to pick up at a discount on the game campaign. So if you do think that you're going to end up looking at this later on down the line at FLGS, uh, you can get this at a discount there. And you've also got the deluxe version, which has got upgraded components using utilising wood and loads of game found exclusive extras too. So you won't be able to get hold of this once it heads ah, off to game found. Cool. Look, oh, I do love a tidy inside of all game. Oh, that's a yeah. good insert. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> But this, it looks like a lot of fun. And as I said, it's taking that high fantasy. There's so much oh. extras. Yeah, you get extra stuff in oh, the it's deluxe. Double sided board. Oh. <laughs> Calm down, man. Calm down. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Um, Custom shaped wood. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think, unless you, you've been playing board games for a long time, I, I bet you get just as excited about wooden meeples as oh, I yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing quite the same as wooden meeples about the fact that you can add little things to them too. It's adorable. But um, it does look really interesting. It got funded in, in a matter of hours um, when it went on to Game Crown. Game Brewer have been looking at this title for a while now, so people have been keen and excited. And if you do want to get yourself a slum um, car protectors, they are available in the Add-ons as well if you do want to keep them nice and clean when you first get it. Look at them. Look at yeah. those. I am loving the fact that they're showing the differences between the base game and the actual deluxe one there. Yeah. yeah that's, that's really that's nice to see because sometimes you'll see it say deluxe and it's just like, well, what do you get? What's upgraded? What's get so deluxe? Yeah. 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 It's so nice seeing that. You can so, certainly see the difference. Do these apply to like uh, um, upgrades that your druids can get? Do you know? Are they these like these seem to be given when you've when you've met a series of tasks and you got to a certain oh, point. Oh. They'll upgrade to an elder, um, nice. so these like will that. be given to your elder. And they come in all versions of the game, which is yeah. pretty cool. Sounds yeah. nice. Yeah, very so, your little main pool can be mm. rocking an accessory as well. Yeah. I'm a, but, a big fan of worker placement games, so this one sounds right up my street. Yeah, it does look like a lot of fun. There's 20 days left on the clock for this one. There isn't any stretch goals. As I said, you've just got your add-on of your card protectors. It's a nice, simple campaign, so if you do like the look at this one. Um, it's it not a huge 20. ask for the price of it as well. No. No, no, no. 85 euros. Not pretty, mm-hmm. pretty good, though, yeah. No. And there's lots of videos as well. So if you want to learn a little bit more about it, you can go and see what other people have been check, talking about and, and diving into, get a little bit of gameplay on the mm-hmm. on the screen and and uh, as you think about your pledge and stuff, which is quite nice. So it also said it was one to four players as well. I think one to four. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see going off on your own. I love a solo board yeah. game as well. So it'd be quite nice and oh, fulfilling as it were. Oh, no, they're darling, aren't they? They're just that adorable. That level of want increases well i love, I love everdell because it has like really nice lovely yeah. components and it's set in the wood and so this has really nice components and it's set in a wood so like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is yeah. where i'm at as well ben i'm very much in a similar just, boat very nice. just missing the anthropomorphic animals that's true yeah but yeah mythical so, creatures it? yeah if you're interested in that one uh what how many days was left 20 days that? left 20 on the days. clock that one very cool yeah cool. so uh we're going to close things out uh, for this week on the weekender with uh, just one more Kickstarter for us to dive into. Uh, we talked about old school role-playing games and stuff uh, throughout this show. And when we looked at that indie and of course when we looked at some Bestarium stuff as well. But Bestarium. But there we go. <laughs> You're not getting away from this one. No, no. So the this is my that... favourite thing ever. <laughs> I hope you continue this forever. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, maybe we'll be see on them my at Expo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so as well as uh, some really nice miniatures and things, it's also a role-playing game you can check out from it, guys at Exalted Funeral. Um, so this is a new Kickstarter that is looking to bring to life a set of classic role-playing game books for you to use on the tabletop. Um, it's going to be sort of split up into two. So you get the two different box sets. You've got the classic game set and the advanced expansion set. Mm-hmm. Very similar to kind of like old school OSR, if you remember that from back in the day, D&D. You'll also notice that the artwork that they're using for this one is very similar to that kind of art style from back in the day as well. Um, the game itself, the role-playing game, is very similar to traditional Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it kind of takes, as I say, that sort of 70s and 80s style of role playing nice. where everything is very hard uh, and, you know, 
things are not stacked in your favor. You are probably going to die if you come up against a bunch of stuff too quickly. It's all about planning and sort of... Uh, Kill those rats, about, get those levels. Yeah. Kill rats, get levels, but one of those rats is actually a massive demon and eats your face. That's the kind of thing we're looking at with this one, which is, thing is quite nice. They've kind of perfected this as part of like the um, indie community over the last couple of years. And so the intent with this is to kind of approach those old school, old school RPGs, but in, with a new design philosophy. So all the books have been laid out really nicely, all the artwork's really good, which we'll see in a little second as well. Uh, and they really sort of approach this from kind of like a, a love letter standpoint, looking back at those old role-playing games. As you can see, it kind of has those classic old school uh, class and things in it. So mm -hmm. you've got things like the Acrobat, which I think everyone who's played sort of old school D&D &D will know. You've got your Bard, your Illusionist, your Knight. The Magic User, I love that. It's not, it's not Sorcerer <laughs> or like Wizard, it's Magic User. You're allowed. You yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they, that, that's so open-ended. You could be yeah. anything. Exactly. <laughs> they, they've stopped short of making Elf a class as it used to be in old D&D. &D, so that's quite What cool. is the last name in the races? Uh, the Sphinable. Uh, <laughs> Sphinable. <laughs> it's, it's basically like a, a Nordic gnome kind of thing, okay. I think. So, yeah. So it's I, I'll just call it like, a Glyn. Yeah. Or like a dark gnome, I think is the, is the way that is. Call I'm sure someone can. Fine. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure someone can. Uh, uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong there, but uh, mm. yeah, some very nice stuff. Um, as I say, it's kind of broken down into the two different sets. So you get the classic game set, which comes with these really nice sort of A5 books. So you get one for characters, magic, adventures, monsters, and treasure. Uh, so these are kind of like guide you in the making of characters, how to use magic, all the different monster feeder face. I think there's like a hundred plus monsters in this book, wow. which is pretty cool. And it's like, I think it's over a hundred pieces of treasure or something as well. Mm. And then that's your kind of like starter adventure book, which is quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, they then sort of like up Graded this with, and as you can see, well, so I'll, I'll talk about the uh, the layout and stuff. I think this is really nice because it's kind of like taking the old school tables and things and reinvented them in a much more readable way. Mm. Um, because you, normally it was like reading through a textbook, but I think they've done a really good job of kind of supplementing these with art artwork and stuff to make it very nice and easy to get stuck into. Um, so yeah, there's mm. all your map, all your old school monster stats and things, which is quite nice. A very fun of final. Uh, not Final Fantasy, Fighting Fantasy style skeleton there on the. Mm -hmm. uh, That's a little bit probably. Jason and the Argonauts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's such a good scene. I need to go watch that again after this. Uh, we've also got the advanced expansion set. Uh, so this kind of adds a few more. Um, I think it's nine more character classes for you to play as. A oh. uh, hundred more spells, loads of new monsters, and a whole bunch of extra treasure items as well. So this is again sort of like you know you had sort of D and D and then AD and D. This kind of adds a little bit mm -hmm. sort of an extra level of fun stuff onto the. Uh, the experience at the tabletop and there you can see yeah you go nine additional classes which is pretty cool so that's yeah, cool nice mm -hmm. and then again very nice layout and everything for these two yeah. uh there is also this which is the ultimate dungeon bundle um so this collects together that uh the two different book uh, sort of slipcase sets so you, each of those so that, i mean you've got like nine books across those two and then you get each of these adventures so there's six of the old school nice. essentials adventures and then there's a special one done by another one of the authors in, that's part of their campaign and then you get that really nice old school D and A D and D style mm. uh, GM screen, which I think is just fantastic. Mm, uh, we're great. very much diving into the old school, I think, with the start and end of this episode. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> very cool. There. Um, but yeah, so there's a couple of different options there. There's also um, retail elements as well. Yeah. Nice thing with the stretch goals is they've approached this from the um, the standpoint of kind of upgrading what you already what you're already getting. Mm. So they're not necessarily adding in new books per se but sort of things like new monsters and new races for you to play as so the dragonborn and the tiefling and that kind of thing which is quite nice and expanded section on gear and all that kind of stuff that's good well. more to the content and there yeah. is more to be unlocked yeah more things like dice and all sorts of things there as well which is quite oh, dice. awesome but, yeah. really awesome lots and lots of additional things in there as well yeah. um what's quite nice about this too uh is that you also have access to some free resources as well. So That's Necrotic great. Gnome, which I think is just an amazing name to begin with, yeah. um, has also done a, a old school essentials basic rule set for you to download. So if you want to see how the game works, uh, whether or not it's for you, you can go and just pick that up. So it's just a PDF download for that one. And you've got all the different sort of assets that you'd need for uh, playing around with this. There's also, as you can see, the third party license thing. So if you want to make your own stuff using their old school essentials rules, oh, you can do that nice. as well, which is quite good to say. Cool. And there you go. So yeah, some nice stuff there from the folks at uh, Exalted Funeral. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to scroll all the way back to the top and make you sick. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, uh, by the time you see this, there will be uh, five uh, five days left, six days left for you to dive in and give us a go. As you can see, completely well-funded. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, smashed so, yeah. it. So if you're in the need for a little bit of old-school role-playing, you have that option there. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Um, I think that finishes off for this week. Um, everyone's going to go and enjoy their Friday night and have some fun. Mm-hmm. Um, that may just involve sitting at a computer painting terrain, which is my, my pursuit, but there we go. Well, um, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll be hunting out some space marines. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. We've, we've been tasked now, that's true. Yeah. Um, but yes. Uh, that brings us to the end of the weekend. Uh, I will just go back to what we're saying at the start of the show. Tomorrow, we're going to be holding the big UK Games Expo mm-hmm. live stream between 12 and 2. We're going to be giving away absolute mountains of prizes through some really fun things like quizzes and all sorts of things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're also going to be talking to a bunch of different uh, companies and designers and all that kind of thing as well. So it's a really good opportunity to dive in and find out what UK Games Expo 2022 is going to be all about. Uh, obviously, we're going to be there to talk, talk you through everything uh, in the chat and on the screen as well. Yeah. We also have on Sunday the uh, release of the um, the uh, the Spring Clean Challenge as well. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to dive in and check that out, uh, then make sure to do that. Find out your found all your old dusty miniatures, mm-hmm. like those space marines that Justin was uh, mentioning. Yeah, they're probably uh, very dusty. Yeah. Look, while I remember, uh, while I'm thinking about Expo, I actually have a little something for you and Free Ben for when oh. we're at the show. Oh, oh, I found oh. the forbidden chocolate. The forbidden. Oh, no. I'm really excited about trying this. Don't, I am oh, really dear. excited. About it. I love yeah. crisps and chocolate. So the fact that Tato have gone about creating <laughs> chocolate and putting crisps into it, let's go. Well, there we go. So that's something to dwell on over the weekend. The fact that we're going to be getting cheese and onion chocolate. There we go. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> I just made your weekend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and of course, remember to watch out for uh, Infinity Week that's starting on Monday. Raven and I, it's going to be amazing. Some really fun videos there from Carlos, Killian, and Jerry to dive into. Uh-huh. Very good stuff there as well. So, yes, uh, final thing to say. Hope you enjoyed the show. Mm-hmm. Seen something you liked? Make sure to comment down below as well. Share this on Facebook and social media and all that kind of thing as well. Get your friends involved. Comment down below with everything that you've, uh, we've talked about. How how would you say Bistarium in a really cool way? Bistarium. There we go. That way. Yeah, yeah. That exact um. way. That's the only way. Very much so. <laughs> um, so, yes, have fun. Have a good weekend. Join us tomorrow. If we don't see you, uh, we'll see you on Sunday as part of the Cult of Games. If you want to come over and talk to us about all sorts of fun stuff over there. Lloyd has some very interesting things to talk about. He has some strange likes but anyway you'll learn it's, more about that on sunday it's a strange sunday. show it's, it's a, a yeah, strange it is, show it's an interesting it's one this show. week yeah. But yeah if we don't see you on sunday we'll see you next week for the weekend or on friday <laughs> bye for now and stay safe everybody go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and while you're at it why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong go on you know you want to click it go on <laughs>